it probably goes live. Okay, we are live. What is up? It is your friendly neighborhood, Matt. And I am so excited because today we are hanging out oh, man. with legendary, world-renowned, very good friend of mine, world-class speed painter, Dave Santia! Oh, oh, yeah. We are going to have a great show tonight. I can't wait to introduce you to Dave Santia. Oh, my gosh. We've got so much fun stuff to talk about. Um, my gosh. And I've got a, a thing here that, that will go by, kind of a routine. Um, but I cannot wait. So the first thing, I was just curious how this even goes down. Are you able to share on uh, Facebook? Does that I, work? Oh, look at that. We yeah, are live. I, I shared it. I, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> I shared it to one page. Okay. I shared it to my personal page. Now we're going to. Uh, oh, the pro page. Yeah. Now we're going to my other page. There we go. And I think I got it. Let me see. There you are. Awesome. Yeah, there we are. Rock and roll. We are live. Right now, we're live on YouTube. Uh, usually, the easiest way to find it, I tell people, is on YouTube. We're on my Facebook. We're on your both of your Facebook channels. We're on uh, my Twitch, my Twitter, my LinkedIn. And uh, we've got a great episode for you tonight. Can't wait. But first things last, I want you guys to say hello to our friend, Mr. James Polony. James, what is going down, my friend? Not a whole lot. Uh, I feel like... I'm not at all the relevant subject matter this time. So uh, yeah, but dude, first of all, you have been busy in the last what week and a half cat sitting, right? Oh, I had adventures in cat sitting. Yeah, I did. Uh, have a whole eight uh, post cat log. Just okay, getting on their level on trying, your on your Facebook. Sense. Yeah, well, we'll have to add a we'll have to add a link to that later so people can check that out. Um, rock and roll. I love the uh, the attire. This is. Oh. I don't think I've seen you in. Uh, in like Hawaiian, well, um, no, this was uh, I had to uh, I had a grad party to go to today, and okay. uh, my uh, extended family on my dad's side was there. So this comes out of the wardrobe that I dubbed just you know things that make uh, people comfortable. <laughs> 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 but I had to have just a little bit. Uh, I mean, you have to have the black. And yeah, the white, you know, and, all uh, right. It's got some little. Palm trees on there. Yeah, I'm liking it. It is. It's very cool. It's like goth LA. It's a little. It's a little dark K-pop. I dig it. It's like all right, Alice. I'll come uh, and I'll dress for the occasion to your standards, but <laughs> I have a little, you know, wiggle room. I it's feel. it's the James twist. I love it. Because I mean, because her son, uh, my cousin Craig, he's a he's a sound guy. He rocks out. I'm like, I'm like, you, he's exactly like it's like hanging out there. <laughs> Okay. So like, well, Craig's gonna be there, and I get a pass too. You know, it's, uh, that's great. All right, so we are making some delicious drinks. It is the summertime. Oh my gosh! So Memorial Day. What did I even do? Oh, I was at my uh, folks' house. That was uh, that was great. What are they doing? The, uh, they're doing good. They've got a house on Lake Oakland, oh, and. Uh, uh, they're doing well. Doing good. That was great. Uh, busy. Not super busy, but busy work week. Got some good uh, some good work in. And uh, ready to recap the week and look forward to the new one in the lounge. All right. Do a little bit of this. So, Dave, oh, my gosh, I can't wait. We're going to get to some comments for those of you that are here. If you're here, sound off. And I want to hear if you're familiar with Dave's work. What's the favorite piece you've seen? Have you seen him create his work? I, don't let me forget. I definitely want to talk about um, I've got this whole thing about art and performance and how it's 2D art. But um, well, I've got this whole thing about it. That's just my own view on what art is and that you like push it to the max which is great um but we'll do our toast and we'll get the party started james i assume you want some caffeine with me correct no you know my pants just got six inches short because i hated the idea <laughs> i love it <laughs> he's always got great quips like that like i asked him i knew he wanted to be here specifically tonight because you were going to be here oh. 
but I said, uh, I hadn't heard from him all week. So I said, uh, hey, you're going to be here tonight hanging out with Dave Santia, right? And he said, he's like, oh, I assume you're in for tonight. I'm like, call me high waisted denim because I am so in. <laughs> Isn't that great? He's always got the best, the best quips. <laughs> all right. A little caffeine, courtesy of Costco. In addition to Costco, a little, little Irish love. And then in addition to that, a little bit of, I know it sounds strange, but peanut butter. And then on top of that, James, what is your flavor on top? We've got, of course, mocha, glazed donut, peanut butter cup, cookie dough, butter toffee, and vanilla bean. You always had cookie dough? Yes. Oh. Well, and hit, you know, hook, hook me up with that. All right. I never even, never even knew there was such a thing. Yeah. yeah, and it's zero calorie. I mean, the rest of what we're drinking here is probably pretty high in calories, but... I was going to gloss over that. Oh, yeah, for I the record, for it. all my friends who are watching, I'm drinking water. In the, in the <laughs> Ducerono glass? Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, we make it, cla we make it classy here. I, I quit drinking about uh, four and a half years ago. Good yeah. for you. Yeah. Now, do, now in addition to... Um, uh, just other health benefits of not drinking. What have you noticed health wise? Do you notice, um, have you noticed a difference in like your diet, your productivity? Is there other health? I've heard some people say, oh my gosh, I have more energy. I feel better. Like there's, a, uh, I, I've heard a lot of things. Yeah. I, I mean, you know, it's for sure, you know, you know, I, I drink a lot and, you know, I'm not waking up with the hangover all the time and all that stuff, which is, you know, and, in the beginning, when I was quitting drinking, I found I had all this time, all this extra time that I didn't have before, mm -hmm. you know, and I was able to do stuff. And actually, um, I was able to, to develop other things. I developed this. I, I learned how to do this um, this other form of, of uh, speed painting, I guess you could say, but it's what we, we, it's called splash painting, where I'm yeah. rushing something onto the canvas yeah and the canvas is all white and then you know by the time the music is done you know the performance and everything i throw paint on the canvas and it reveals an image what? That, that's awesome yeah, yeah that took me a long time to figure that out but yeah. and, it, and it turns out it's just a simple um a simple solution yeah uh but also you know my diet did change um when i when i first quit you know, I developed a very strong craving for sugar and I was eating sugar all the time. I gained so much weight and I still got it. I can't get rid of it. But um, yeah, the energy kind of came back, um, you know, uh, all that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, ambitions to do other things, that sort of thing. Yeah, dude, rock and roll, man. Yeah. Good for you. Dude, let's cheers to Sunday night's live stream lounge, hanging out, creativity. We are going to talk all the things. It's the first time since I've known you that that did not rhyme. Oh. <laughs> well, you made up for it just now. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. We are going to get the party started. Awesome, awesome. All right. So you guys are hanging out in the live stream lounge. Let's see. It looks like we have some comments already. People hanging out, checking in. Severia says, what up, Severia? LOL, I'd watch it. I'm already past what we would watch. Oh, was it what he was talking about? Oh, the 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 cat. Oh, the cat thing, cat sitting, cat adventures with James. Hi, Brittany. Robin, I've seen I I've seen did perform at 
bras bras for a cause yeah bra oh bras for a cause and royal oak at one of the very first ones they did amazing oh, yeah. yeah i have actually only seen you perform i've seen you a bunch on youtube right in person i've only seen you perform twice i think i'm, I'm sure i'll remember something else tonight but for sure i saw you at uh i Maybe it was, I can't remember if it was called Fantasticon no, in Dearborn. Called, uh, fan, fan, fanfare. Fanfare, Detroit maybe fanfare. Detroit Fanfare. I yep. saw you there. Yep. And then I saw you perform yes. at a an art gallery in Wyandotte. Oh, yes. And both times, it was amazing. The music, the yes. performance. And I think the one even at the, uh, the one in Wyandotte, I want to say, all of a sudden, and I'm a huge Van Halen fan, and right. the Van Halen music started, and I was just like, <laughs> what? And then it's, uh, your technique is amazing. We're going to talk about that coming up, but uh, so much to uh, chat about. Dave. Uh, Jay Shimko says, Dave. <laughs> Jay says, Dave, I have an announcement for you. Boba Fett <laughs> is alive. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that must be an inside joke. It, it is. It is. Uh, years ago, I, I don't know. I want to say it, it started maybe 20 years ago. Him and I would, because Boba Fett's his favorite Star Wars character, right? Mm -hmm. And we all see him go into the Sarlacc pit and get eaten and then, you know, it burps and all that stuff. Yeah. But then they came, they came back and he came, they brought him back in the comics and in the novels and all this. Sure. And my argument was that the comics and the novels is just officially licensed fan fiction. Yeah. And his argument is, no, it's not. It's official. It's it's this, it's that. And I said, well, George Lucas even said he died, you know, and all that stuff. And, we, yeah, yeah. and it's just been an ongoing thing back and forth. Okay. And now he's back. Yeah. And it's official. <laughs> he's yeah. really back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, it did go back and forth for a while because a lot of people considered expanded universe material to be right. canon but there was so much of it that a lot of it kind of canceled each other out like mm -hmm. well if this happened and this happened they couldn't both have happened and that you was know, my kind of argument thing. yeah yeah <laughs> so <laughs> then funny. it got to a point where uh, they they kind of canned all of the expanded universe material when disney came in right and they called it legends right right um, sure. but yeah. a lot of that material now is becoming canon things like right. grand admiral thrawn sure. and all that is is slowly Which, you coming know, into place that's understandable i mean i mean it was popular back then bring back the popular stuff mm -hmm. and, and turn into the into the canon i i don't see you know i i've got no problems i've got no problem with that that's, yeah that's cool you know you know it's funny long term at the time i thought it was a bad decision just because people were so into mm -hmm. a lot of the expanded universe Very material invested. but looking ahead and seeing how things played out it only made it even more exciting when boba comes back when boba fett comes back because now it's it's if it wasn't real before it's real now, it's real now. how you no. feel about the show maybe you can't argue it now but Jay, Jay, you, you won <laughs> you won okay decades later and it's still going <laughs> that's great i, I concede <laughs> so funny. So we are hanging out tonight with Dave Santia. Dave Santia, also a, uh, a huge supporter of Aladdin 3477. There he is in his Fiji shirt. And I want to talk about, oh my gosh. So you have, story behind that one. <laughs> you have all kinds of art and all of it is amazing. And the crazy thing that you have to know is that, um, I guess I'll get into my thing now that I, uh, the way that I consider art. So a lot of people consider art when they talk when, when I'm talking about art, that's my quick way of saying I know art is also music and dance and everything. But for tonight, we're talking 2D art. We're talking drawings. We're talking paintings. Um, it could be digital. It could be watercolor. I'm just talking about flat creating art. Um, a lot of people consider you do all this work and you add this and you put a splash here and, and everything else. What's left? is the art right i have kind of a weird metaphysical thing about that i kind of disagree mm -hmm. i kind of think the process is actually the art what's left over is kind of a recording of what one did of what the artist did and i kind of see everyone's like even though what we see is the painting the real art was the performance because you look at it and you might see a spatter over here, but 
was it a calculated like dot 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 mathematically right. or was there a way that an artist took either a paintbrush or a sometimes a toothbrush dipped it in was there a way that they stood back like this and like that almost like uh who's the guy that uh salt bay that does the <laughs> you know what i mean yeah, it's yeah. a performance yeah. it's not just putting little bits of salt it is it's the way he does it and that is that is the art it's the performance what are i mean of all people you are that you embody the performance of creating art what are your thoughts on that that's exactly what you know i tell people i say that exact same thing to a lot of people the art isn't in the actual painting it's it, the, the 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 end result it's not in the painting itself the art is in the actual performance you know i've got i've got the music going on at the same time and, and the music is related to the painting and I'm throwing the paint on there. And sometimes I'm, you know, being trying, sometimes I'm an really animated, sometimes not so much. Um, it depends on the content, I'm sure. It, it, yeah. And, you know, a lot of it, like the, if I'm, if it's slow music, you know, I'm not going to be bouncing around. <laughs> right, you right. Know, but, um, and a lot of people still don't quite understand that. I just did a, an event, uh, maybe about a month or two ago where they wouldn't allow me to play my music. They wouldn't allow me to do this. They wouldn't allow me to do that. They just wanted me to just do the painting. And I'm like, I'm like, well, you know, it's all part of the whole thing. You know, you're, you're robbing the audience of a lot of, of what the art actually is. The art isn't the painting itself. It's the performance. The, and like, as you said, the painting is, you know, like a, a record a re recording or mm -hmm. you know what was what came of the the performance and and you know and people you know they got it, it, they, and when people record me or or film me or whatever and they've got their painting hanging on the wall the painting becomes you know a bit more of a conversation piece because now they can say oh yeah i've got this cool painting of which one you got there of um David from the Lost Boys. Yeah. But you should have seen the way how this guy did it. He had Lost Boys music playing and he's throwing the paint on there and it's just splattering all over the place and yeah. it's all chaos. And then he flips it right side up and then it's, you know, yeah. it makes an image. So that's one of the, and that's one of the coolest things I think is that not only do you do this in a matter of minutes and is it usually one song or two or does it depend? It depends on how complicated the painting right. is probably, yeah. right? It's, it's usually two songs. Um, sometimes I get them, I, you know, sometimes it's, it's one song for the really, really complex paintings. It it can take up to like three, maybe even four songs. You know? Yeah. But, uh, but you know, that's very, very, very rare, but yeah, it's usually two songs. Yeah. Yeah. And it's the coolest thing because a lot of times you can't tell what it is and you might be like, what? and you might have an idea, like if Van Halen music is playing, you have a pretty you know, right. good idea. But then when you flip it right side up, like everyone is just like, what? <laughs> oh my gosh. And it's just, it's such a fun thing. It's a really great, you create such an awesome experience for people to enjoy it. And they can't wait to see what you're going to do next. I am so jealous in a healthy way, but that has got to be too. That's got to feel, it's got to feel amazing. It's got to be, I mean, you have really tapped into uh, a kind of art again where you're making the expressing yourself the performance is kind of the most important thing which it is but a lot of people don't really a lot of people don't know that or don't feel that way mm -hmm. but you like just you push that to the max it's amazing well you know uh, thank you um it's 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 kind of funny what was something was on my mind about it um you know i i how i i i I know I can't take any credit for Oops. you know developing this sort of thing. This was developed by artist uh, Denny Dent back in the uh, early eight, late seventies, early eighties, and and actually I stumbled across one of his videos about 12, 13, maybe fourteen years ago on YouTube, and uh, and I and it was from that TV show um, that's incredible. Remember that show? Oh, yeah, that yeah. of course, forty something years ago. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, the, there was a headline, there was a, like a caption on, on YouTube and the title of the, the video that caught my attention. It was in the suggested video section. So I clicked on it. The title said something like this artist does something amazing or incredible or whatever. 
So I clicked on it and I'm watching it. And there's John Davidson and whoever the, the other you know host was. And they're talking about this artist. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, get on with it. I'm going to see what's so amazing about this artist. Well, they cut to the Denny, Denny Dent. And he's got this big black canvas. He's got multiple brushes in each hand. He's got He's got cans of paint all surrounded by his feet, kind of like almost like the same setup as me. Beatles music starts playing, and this guy just attacks this canvas, just goes nuts all over this canvas. Yeah. And within seconds, you can tell it was going to be John Lennon. And as soon as he finished the eyes, he turned, the audience started cheering, and he turned around and he, you know, acknowledged the audience. And he went back to the painting and finished it off, and he was done within a song, and it was a painting of John Lennon. Yeah. And I said to my, and I watched that video again, and I watched it again, and I looked him up, and I saw in other videos of him, and this and that. He's he's passed away about fifteen, maybe twenty years ago, but um, uh, then I said to myself, you know, with what I know, with what I, you know, because I've been drawing and painting since I was little, with what I, with my knowledge, I think I can do this. I think I can figure this out, and I think, you know, I can use, I can probably do this as an alternative form of entertainment for bars and restaurants make a few bucks on the weekends that was the plan that yeah. was the idea yeah so i started training myself i had to figure out what brushes to use what type of canvas to use what type of paint to use the, all that stuff and how to do it and i you know trained myself on how to. i had this rotating easel made i found a, a friend of mine who was able to manufacture because at the time I don't think they were making rotating easels. They're called windmill easels, and they make them now. They make them now. Yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, they they cost an arm and a leg, but you know, so did so did mine. It was custom made, <laughs> and so then so then um, I started training myself. The whole upside down thing. I'll get into that later, but um, I started recording these uh, recording videos of myself practicing uh, in my basement. And I would throw these videos up on YouTube, Facebook, wherever, you know, and um, and I would take the videos, I would take my cell phone and I would go around to all these bars and restaurants locally. Yeah. And I would ask them, you know, I talked to the owner and I'd show them the video and I was offering to do it for free. Can I perform here on, on, on a weekend or maybe one day a week? Wow. And every single one of them turned me down. They all turned wow. me down. Wow. What? Yeah, except for one. Okay. Freddy's. Really? Yeah, I was going to say, I know you've got a beautiful piece there. Yeah, Garfield, Freddy's on Garfield. They, when Fred was still alive, he wanted me to do it, but I, it never happened. I'll get into that too. But I took it all, all around to all these bars and restaurants, and I offered to do it for free, and they all turned me down. And then a friend of mine called me up, Ron Derezzi. He's my dentist. He calls me up and he says, Dave, he goes, I've got this fundraiser coming up uh, in May. This was uh, February of 2011. He goes, I got this fundraiser in May coming up. How about, you know, I've been seeing these videos that you're posting. Why don't you come on out and do a couple of those speed paintings and we'll auction them off for this charity. It was the Children's Tooth Fairy Foundation. Well, I told him no. Because uh, all of a sudden I got cold feet. Because before I was the one on the hunt. Now all of a sudden, this guy's after me. He wants me to do it. So then he was persistent. He kept calling me. He kept bugging me. And finally I said, "All right, I'll do it." Yeah. Okay. Just leave me alone. You know. <laughs> so so I, I did it. A couple months came, and and I did it. It was a Sunday in May, Sunday afternoon. And I did the paint. The first painting I did was the Statue of Liberty. And I had it upside down and everything. And, and I'm painting it. Within about 30 seconds into the painting, I screwed up. I, I painted something that was supposed to remain black. Because the canvas is, starts off all black. Right. And I put the color on there. Oh, boy. And I painted, over an, I painted an area that was supposed to remain black. And I froze. And I was already shaken. I mean, I was already scared because I'm in front of couple hundred people i don't know yeah and um and and here i am i just screwed up in front of all these nice people and i said to myself i i, I should i gotta just drop the brushes turn around and apologize and just walk out because i'm not ready for oh this. my gosh but then i said to myself if i do that yeah it's over before it even begins mm -hmm. i got black paint with me 
I said it to myself, I knew the spot where I screwed up. I'll finish the rest of the painting. By the time I'm done, latex paint dries, you know, pretty quickly because, and that's the type of paint that I use. By the time I'm done, I'll, I'll be able to, it'll be dry enough where I can cover it in black. Now, all these thoughts ran through my head within maybe a second. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> it probably, it felt like, you know, 10 minutes, but, you know, it, it, they ran through my head like that. I said, I'm dropping it. No, I can't. If I do, I'm done. So I finished the painting off and I covered up that area. I flipped it right side up. It was the Statue of Liberty. The crowd loved it. None of them were the wiser that I screwed up. Yeah. And uh, we auctioned it off. Uh, and then I did the next painting. It was um, Jimi Hendrix. Okay. Uh, this was uh, hosted by Paula Tutman from Channel 4, or she was the MC. So then, um, so then later on that night, we found out that about the time I was doing the Statue of Liberty painting uh, was when they, they killed um, Osama bin Laden. Oh, jeez. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it brings chills to me every time I, I think of it, even right now. Yeah. But um, but anyways, that event led to two more fundraisers, and those two led to four more fundraisers. And before I knew it, I'm traveling across the country. I am, you know, people are calling me, asking me for my artwork. And this is all stuff that totally was not part of the plan. I just wanted to be just the guy that was painting at bars and restaurants for a few hundred bucks yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the weekends. Yeah. But it turns out that it, it you know, that's amazing. Something. Yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, I've developed other, you know, speed painting friends over the years, you know, through, through doing this, apparently, you know, I've caught the attention of, you know, a lot of people. So is there, how many people is there, is there a rough number of people that are doing speed painting um kind of like this around the world is it is there like a club of people <laughs> that like you guys like you know, once a year get together in, in the caribbean and like and swap stories over that's like, actually not a bad idea kind of like a convention every year. yeah um if, if you would ask me that question 10 years ago i would say there was probably uh maybe a couple dozen people back then yeah but i i could even then i could still be way off i i don't know there was there was about a dozen that i knew of back then now it just seems like you know there's so, at least someone in every state every country they're they're pretty much all over the place now yeah you know um it's it's i mean it's not a form of entertainment that's main as mainstream as like a singer or yeah. acting or anything of course like that. but um and there's still a lot of people that have no clue what it is you yeah know? like i could say i'll tell i could tell a total stranger i'm a speed painter and I, like most of the time the first question is what's that yeah you know they have no clue yeah and you know it's kind of hard to explain what it is it's hard kind of hard to describe what it is so i always tell them you know the best way for me to describe it is if i just show you and i show them a video or something yeah and uh and then they you know they're like oh wow yeah you know yeah <laughs> imagine a, a painting but if the flash did it mm. there you go there you go i love this piece this has and this does this have maybe more colors than usual or not really not really i okay. used um i don't have green it's green but i don't have green i don't use green in my color palette um i i i i, I used to but i don't anymore that mm -hmm. i that you know i my my color palette is very very basic i've got i've got a um i've got three colors that i use for flesh tones and i've got two shades of blue two shades of red one yellow white and sometimes gray so if i need green i i'll mix um uh you know yellow and, and blue yeah if i need a lighter green i mix uh yellow with a little bit of blue and i'll add in white. some white yeah you know and uh uh yeah that's 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 pretty much every once in a while i have to pull out some sort of specialty color like a pink or a purple or something for certain paintings, but that's that's very rare. Yeah. I, I like to stick with the basic colors that I've got because you know you have those colors: the red, the yellow, and the blue. You can pretty much put it mm -hmm. together. Oh yeah, the primaries for yeah. sure. This is great. I love the colors. 
the colors in the face in the shadows and stuff yeah so cool and i love you know a lot of these i love the the splotches and the little whips of paint i feel like it adds to the energy and also like this kind of feels like basketball and jumping up and down. Maybe you're just like, oh, I don't know. I was just whipping stuff around. But like I see that. Or if I like if you do a painting of Jimi Hendrix, there's like these splotches that like go like this. And I'm like, that's how he plays guitar. And I don't yeah. know if you're thinking that, but that's what I see. Well, and I just I think it's so cool. See, it, it depends. It's it depends on the music that that's playing because that 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 plays a big part on how I do the painting. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you uh Pull, pull up a, a painting that I did where I'm where I've got Van Halen music or Jimi Hendrix music playing and they're very energetic and then I'm you know with yeah the, I'm going going nuts at I don't know what the splatters are gonna do yeah you know yeah. I, I have a general I can put them I have a general idea of how I can do it like if I do it like this or I could do it like that yeah. you know it'll maybe it'll look a certain way it doesn't always come out that as yeah. planned but you know but or or I'll just you know dip grab some the, yeah in the bucket and just go like that yeah but um yeah so the splatters uh, they 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 do what they what they want to do half the time and then i've got to work with it or sometimes around it and uh and and it is what it is you know and um yeah and this yeah the splatters are all a big part of the part of the painting yeah um so cool and this is your new your new light up shirt right? yeah actually yes that version no longer exists okay and i'll tell you i'll tell you the story behind that shirt i you know i i'm looking for new ideas for to add to the stage antics and stuff sure i decided to come up with this shirt with all these sparkling lights to it right so i got one of my favorite dress shirts you know i i i, I I'm always wearing black, but now I, I switched it up. Now I'm not going to be wearing black too often anymore because you can't see me on the stage you know, oh, a lot of time. Yeah. So I, and that's what came to the idea of the lighted shirt. You can't see me on stage. So if I put lights in there, then you can see me, right? And then I'm like, eh, you know what? I'll put lights on a white shirt instead of a black shirt. So I got these, um, so I got these strings. That, that shirt that you see there, it's, got three strings of um of LED. led twinkling lights uh there's 200 lights per string so there's three strings on there there's 600 lights on that shirt oh my gosh yeah and that one runs on on each each string runs on three double a batteries and it's got a remote control to it the problem with that shirt was that every time i i wore it and every time i performed with it a string broke every time oh my gosh so I, and i glued them in the, the, yeah. the strings are glued in i was originally i was going to sew them in but you know after i sewed in like five or six lights i'm like this is going to take me forever <laughs> yeah yeah I'm just going to glue them in so so now I, I glued them in with that goop glue which is pretty strong but it comes off pretty easily too mm -hmm. every time a string broke i had to pull the string out and replace it with another string and i'm like if this is going to happen every time this shirt is going to be pretty rigid you know yeah, yeah. in a couple months so i had to find i found uh, a new type of a, a different type of um string of lights it's it's like in a vinyl strip and where it won't short out it won't break so the problem though the thing is is that it's all it's multicolors now it doesn't twinkle the same way that these lights did but that's fine it still twinkles it still has and it's sound responsive too so you oh, know, that's the music cool right yeah. so but the problem is is that the only type that i could find where this you know it's I'm, I'm using about 150 feet of this you know strip of led lights um the problem is is that the only type that i could find that was long enough is um uh, they're not it's not battery operated it's an ac plug hmm. so i've got this brick this this power this um um uh power bank it's 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 literally it's like the shape of a brick it's size the size of a brick for me to be able to plug it in the ac plug it it's got an ac plug to it hmm. so and i haven't performed with it with that version yet but i've developed the way i'm, I'm like trying to figure out how am i going to hide this brick mm -hmm. i can't put it in my pocket i, I tried right. strapping it to my leg that just looked weird 
I tried strapping it to my side. It just looked like I had a growth <laughs> yeah. coming out of here. And I'm like, you know, so I, I got this um, uh, that people wear to to slim, oh, yeah, yeah. slim down or m make them look slimmer. Yeah. I can't remember a girdle, a men's girdle or whatever. It's sure. Velcro. And I, I got the thing attached to this, this girdle and I strap it and it's hidden in my back. Yeah. The small of your back. Right. Yeah. So, I, you, so when I stand up straight, you can't see it, but when I'm bending over to pick yeah, up, yeah. It, it comes out, you can see it, but mm. Uh, I, I'm I'm still working out the kinks on that. Maybe I can find a smaller battery, you know, a power bank or whatever. Yeah. Um, my brother just today gave me a number, a phone number to a friend of his that that says he can make one a smaller one that I can hide easier. Yeah. But um, but yeah, that's 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 how that came to came together. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, Robin Barr says your Gordy Howe painting was so good. Oh, thank you. I painted that. Um, I painted that twice this year uh, so far. I didn't start painting that one until last fall. Um, I painted. I painted it the first time at a at a big game dinner. It was a fundraiser. I can't remember what the fundraiser was for. And then I painted it again two nights later at, um, God, why is it escaping me? Uh, it wakes for kids at a wakes for kids event. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, that one is one of the difficult ones that takes me a while. I love this. This is so cool. It's oh. so, it's so simple, but it's like, it's got all the light and shadow in the right places. And it's just, it's magical. E.T. So Who doesn't cool. love ET. If they if someone doesn't love ET, I know I got ET hanging out right I over see there. Him. I see him right over there. If someone doesn't love ET, I don't know if I can trust that. Person. I know, right? Oh my <laughs> gosh. So uh okay, so we can start talking about our mutual love of Edward Van Halen. Yeah. Rest in peace. Oh my gosh, and you're a guitar player too, right? Uh, I mean, I I use that term very loosely, yeah, as but, do I for right. myself. Right, yeah. exactly. I'm yeah. not performing on any stage. Yeah, yeah. Anytime soon or or ever at all. <laughs> you know, it's interesting though. I find that for myself, one of the reasons I resonate with Eddie Van Halen so much is I learned to play piano and I used to play drums in school, but I taught myself how to play the guitar. I never right. had guitar lessons or anything like that. Right. And what was interesting is I would start to learn things like tabs and stuff like that. And I would see what strings and what makes a certain chord. But I never had a teacher that said, you do your fingers like this or you do, you know, stuff like that. Right. So a lot of times I would play for a friend and they'd be like, you're doing the D, the rock. That's not how you do it. You do it like this. And I was playing the same notes, but I was just doing I was doing something more comfortable for me. And I had been sure. doing it that way for so long that I just started doing it that way. Right. But one of the things that kind of resonated with me is Eddie Van Halen's process of learning was the same. He had piano lessons and everything, mm -hmm. and then he taught himself how to play guitar. He never had lessons. And what was interesting is I started noticing a lot of the way that he would do hold chords and do fingering and, and like you, this low note here, instead of having a finger go like that, I would just have my thumb go around like that because right. that's what I just, you know, and that's what Eddie and discovered years later. Oh my gosh, he does the same thing because he was never taught the right way, you right. know, to do it. You know, it's it's funny that, that you say that because I started off teaching myself how to play guitar. And then after after like a year or so, and I was doing the same way. I didn't know how to do it the right way or the right way or the proper way. I was just doing it how, you know, I saw the tabs and you got to put your finger here and your other finger there. You know, you got to have this this fret pushed or, you know, whatever. And and I was just doing it however I thought, you know, worked out. And it wasn't until I started, you know, I, I started to take lessons casually, not, you know, I wasn't really too heavily into it. And that's when I was told, no, you're doing it wrong. You got to do it this way. This is the right way. And I think, I, I mean, you know, like I said, my, my knowledge on playing guitar is, is limited. But I think that 
um, a lot of the reason why Eddie's sound was so unique was because he played things uh, unconventionally. Uh, he played in, a, in an unconventional manner. Mm -hmm. You know, not just, not just, I'm not talking about like the, the, the notes and the chords he put together. I'm talking about the way, he, the physical way yeah. how he actually played guitar. Yeah. And the other cool thing is obviously the way that he wrote music was not based on music theory or what you're supposed to do, but just what sounds cool. Right. And uh, and I've just always thought that is uh, that is the mark of a true artist for sure. Now, is this this might be one of the things that I saw? Is that this was, the Detroit Fanfare? Yeah. I think I think I was there for that. Uh, yeah, that was the first Detroit Fanfare that I, that I did. That's uh, David Prowse, as we know, is the guy who the original guy that played the original Darth Vader in, in the first three Star Wars movies. Um, and he passed away, what, about a year ago now, I think. Mm -hmm. oh. Um, yeah, he, and I remember when I, when I, when I, when I met him, I was, I was a bit disappointed because in the movie, he's so big, he's so huge. Oh, yeah. And I was taller than him by like well, six inches. <laughs> they should have had you play Darth, Darth you know, Vader. I mean, and so that, so then I did the painting and <laughs> it was so weird. It was so weird. I do this painting. I turn it right side up. We auction it off. He autographed it. He wanted the microphone. So we gave him the microphone. We don't, you know, my my, my DJ doesn't give the microphone to people because you don't know what they're going to say. But yeah, this yeah. is David Prowse. Mm -hmm. you know, he just autographed this painting. Give him the mic. He gave him the mic, right? We didn't know what he was going to say. We thought that we were kind of scared that he was going to what, about what he was going to say because you hear all these rumors that he's got, you know, some animosity towards playing the character or Lucasfilm you know, and yeah, yeah Lucas. You around. hear all these stories and people making money off of Star Wars and he's you know he you know really didn't or whatever you know. And he, so we gave him the microphone. We didn't know what he was going to say. This was after we auctioned the painting off. Yeah. And I can't remember what it went for. I know it was, it was like, like in the 12, 15, $100 range or something like that. And he started singing this weird song. What? <laughs> to the tune of the Star Wars theme song. <laughs> he said something like, Star Wars paid for my mortgage, paid for my. Yeah. Da, 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 da. What? <laughs> it was the weirdest thing ever. If that's oh larger, or if Matt Candela is watching, chime in and and because they both thought the same thing. How weird it was. That is wild. <laughs> oh my gosh. Crazy. Crazy. Um so I wanted to real quick kind of give a quick recap of the last week, what's been going on with uh, Aladdin 3477. First of all, I want to give a big birthday shout out to Jerry Hayes, the Sultan of Sass. Um, enjoyed birthday. a birthday last week. Um, happy birthday. Um, also, the thank you videos. I've been adding one or two new videos each week, and they are on the Aladdin 3477 YouTube. The third playlist down uh, that is where they are added, or it'll just be in the newer, if you click on the videos tab, it'll be the latest videos, but all of them are collected in this playlist. Um, so if you backed at the um, Aladdin's Inner Circle or higher, you have a thank you video either already posted or coming soon. I got a few more to post and we actually have a few more to make, uh, but we are getting on it soon. Megan Mueller was cosplaying as Bredge this weekend at Colossal Con, I believe, and that might be in Ohio, maybe? I'm not sure nice. where that is, or maybe, or Pennsylvania somewhere. Look at the hat. I'm not sure, but yeah, she custom made, I believe she custom made that herself, uh, just based on photos. She's got the, uh, the Hindi patch on there, and the koi fish. Her outfit is amazing, and uh, that is just the coolest representing as Bredge. This is con season, so if any of you are cosplaying as anyone in Aladdin 3477, oh my gosh, please share your photos so uh, I can reshare them and uh, share them, obviously, on the live stream here. That is just too, too cool for words. Thank you so much. All right, draw this in your own style. We actually had a new one this week. 
with a brand new character. Sean Milton illustrated this awesome Lochan Shyamal, and he called this the mechanical, the mechanical monster or something like, or mechanical. I forgot what he called this, but it was actually really cool. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? I should have called Lochan that. I call him the Nano Dragon, but um, uh, this is just super cool. Has a really cool cyberpunk look to it. And uh, I can't wait for you guys to see more of Lochan Shaimal. Awesome job. I believe this is Procreate and um, just a great job on this. Love like the Nano colors. Nano Dragon's a pretty cool online handle. I think you did it right. The Nano Dragon, yeah. <laughs> um yeah i dig it great job sean super super cool and of course at any time we'll probably have a specific lochan uh draw this in your own style and some of the other characters coming up but of course any uh if you do any of the uh aladdin 3477 characters please uh tag me and use the aladdin 3477 uh dtiys handle of course we've got the fidgy specific one uh the contest is over but you can do that dave santia actually did uh two pieces this is one of them yeah. super awesome painterly uh vision of aladdin with the taj mahal looming in the distance it will take me five years perhaps a uh, a look of things to come in the future this is maybe a possible future for aladdin so what i wanted to get into now we're going to come back we're going to circle back to your speed painting but one of the things i love about your presence online is in addition to all the speed painting you are also pretty vocal about investigating new kinds of art that you're into and i love that you share the process and i remember when you first started going into doing digital work you were sharing all of your now most artists would be like i'm not going to share anything until i get good at this you were sharing everything and it was such a cool humble thing to share your mistakes and share what was working what wasn't working you were just being honest and sharing the process and it was it was so cool and refreshing to see um and i look at this the work is fantastic so what what is your What's your experience been working? It's primarily with the iPad, right? Using yep. Procreate. Yeah, it's it's all been on the iPad with with my with Procreate, and you know, I, I mean, before this, actually years ago, I was like one of those guys that was, I was one of those artists that was like, you know, digital art isn't real art because computers doing it all for you, you know, that sort of thing, and then I found out that no, the computer isn't doing it all for you. You're you're the one that's actually doing the drawing. You're the one that's actually applying the colors and doing the rendering and this and that. Sure, there's programs out there that, you know, that'll do that stuff, but then that's not you doing it. You know, that's the that's that's the the, the program doing it. But um then I, I kind of like brushed it off as maybe I'm a little bit too old for you know this sort of thing. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's sort of, that's for a younger, that's for the younger artist. Well, when the pandemic hit, um, I, uh, you know, we were all in lockdown. No one could go to work. No one could leave the house. No one could do this. No one could do that. So I decided to, you know, and, and I posted this, I don't know, this, 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 I made, I posted this, I created this post on Facebook where I said something like, all you, everyone who's complaining about not being able to go to work or not being able to do this, not being able to do this, now, if there's ever a time where you wanted to write a book or teach yourself an instrument, this and that, blah, 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 now is the time to do it. So then I, I said to myself, you know what? I got to take my own advice. Yeah. <laughs> and so I went I, and I got myself an iPad and an Apple Pencil. I kind of like looked up certain art programs. I found this one, Procreate. It was very inexpensive. It's only 15 bucks. You know, and not, then you get to keep it. It's not a, it. it's not a reoccurring thing, right? Where you have to pay every month, right? Like Photoshop, right? You got to pay so much every month. Yeah. So fifteen bucks, and I figured that it was like a good beginner's, you know, platform. But then I'm finding out that it's not really a beginner's platform. Like, dude, there are movie using... poster artists yeah. for legit huge <laughs> movie posters yeah. that use Procreate. I believe it. So I started, you know, you know, 
dabbling with it, messing around with it. And then I would go on YouTube and I would look up tutorials on how to do this and how to do that. And I started following these tutorials. And yeah, I was sharing everything. I, I think the first thing I shared, I don't know, might have been a drawing of Batman that I did. I think it, it was so basic and so, I don't know. I can't remember what it was, but it was just pretty horrendous. But <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> I, I was admitting, you know, I'm just learning how to do this. I have no idea what I'm doing. You know, and I, you know, I, there were times where I've said, man, maybe I should stop. And I'm like, no, I invested this money into this iPad and all this shit. Kept going, and um, you know, started doing these landscape tutorials and kind of like learning the brushes, learning this, learning that. And, uh, you know, then I started doing, um, you know, the cool stuff like Princess Leia over there, mm -hmm. Luke Skywalker, or, you know, this, this uh, stuff. Speaking of Luke Skywalker, I got to say, this may be wow. my favorite, certainly of the, of the digital, like this painterly right. style. This may be my favorite thing you've ever done. This is... Oh, thank you. This is gorgeous. I mean, this is like when I judge art, I don't, I, I'm usually not thinking, I mean, I'm thinking about technique, but when something is my favorite or when I, something calls to me, it has nothing to do with whether it's watercolor or whether it was a charcoal draw. There's what I like is what I like and what right. I'm like, ah, whatever is, is like, ah, whatever. This is beautiful. This like, this captures Luke and it's not like just a direct photo where like, you know, you would like someone would be like, oh, my God, I didn't even know that was that was art. I mean, this is definitely art, but this is just beautiful. It's it's got energy to it. I love the colors. This is extraordinary. This is amazing. Location. Yeah. That, that oh, my was, gosh. That was a pain in the ass to do the, the background. Mm -hmm. the the oh, uh, yeah. The, 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 of course, you know, it's 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 done from two different photo references. Um, the original photo reference of Luke, I, he's on Dagobah, I believe. It's got the vines in the background and all that stuff. Okay. And and I did that. I did I did the image of Luke first as its own, you know, as its own project, and then and then later on, I had the idea of you know because I, I I love the um, the lighting that in in that uh, on that uh, the carbon freezing chamber scene you know with the reds and, and the yellows and the oranges uh you know i believe that i believe that that scene got them the oscar for best lighting if i'm not mistaken for empire mm -hmm. strikes back yeah so and uh, and empire strikes back is my favorite star wars movie of course so right and um so i figured i just you know render that 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 carbon freezing chamber background and put luke right on top of it it's kind of funny because if you break that if you break that that um that digital painting down and you remove luke and where you just see just the background you can see all the broken all the broken you know uh areas or spaces <laughs> where i didn't finish it yeah and why would you need to yeah <laughs> of course yeah, that is that is just awesome. Super cool. But yeah, that was a pain to get the smoke to look like that with the lights. Mm -hmm. you know, it was looking like fire for a while. And I'm like, oh, that's not right. And that, you know, that's my thing. There's there's like key things I look for in really good art. I look for um I look for composition, which mm -hmm. you've got. I look for contrast, which is really good, dark to light, which you've got. The other thing I really look for for me that's important is hard edges and soft edges yeah. and having a good balance between the two. And that's probably one of the reasons this really speaks to me is you definitely have areas of hard edges, but then there's soft edges. There's the smoky areas in the background, but also like transitions in the face where it's not super choppy and in the, uh, in some of the fabrics and stuff as well. It's just such, such yeah. a nice, a nice blend. You know, the, 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 the difficult thing, with digital art is that sometimes you can it can look too much like a photograph where it just looks like like photograph. it's just too perfect right and the, the hard part is getting it to you know like like this one it's you know it's 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 realistic looking but not quite mm -hmm. you know you can see that you can tell that it's not an actual photograph you know if you really look at it sure yeah i love it um uh, 
uh, real quick before we dive into this, Ashish Bakta says, great segment. Love your work, Dave. Oh, thank you. And uh, yeah. Sa Sandra Irving says, favorite speed painting of Dave's, Bowie Mercury. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. Uh, wait, and in fact, I because I, I, I want people to guess, so forget that you said that. Uh, favorite digital is Christopher Reeves, or Christopher Reeve. Was it Christopher Reeve or Christopher Reeves? Reeves. No Reeves? Oh, he used okay. to say that I left the S on my chest. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that is great. I love this Eddie Van Halen piece. You captured that that smile that's like he can't he can't help himself but smile. My first experience kind of getting into Van Halen, I was really young, so I was in it was it was 1984 mm -hmm. that, that where I first really started to get into Van yep, Halen and uh, I was in sixth grade, seventh grade, and um, uh, I didn't have MTV, but my buddy had it, so I'd go over his house and uh, he was like, dude, you have to wait, you have to see this video, Jump by Van Halen, yep, and I already knew too. Van Halen was cool because I saw like older kids, like like kids with long hair that had sure. t-shirts that said Van Halen, so. I didn't even really know the music. I just knew that Van Halen must be cool if those if those guys are wearing Van Halen shirts. And uh, so the first time I saw the video for Jump, I like I had such a guy crush for Eddie because you know they're this rock band and they're kind of they're kind of tough, although their clothes are kind of questionable. And <laughs> David Lee Roth, had, I think he's got panties on the outside of his his spandex pants and stuff. They're, it's so funny, but. The crazy thing about Eddie, he couldn't stop smiling. Yeah. And every time the camera's on, he can't, you can tell he's trying not to smile, but he just, he can't help it because I, he is having the time of his life and maybe he just smiles all the time anyway in well, general, but like. According to what I heard, and this could just be just a rumor and I could be completely wrong. I probably shouldn't even be saying it, <laughs> but from what I, from according to what I heard when they filmed the jump video, yeah. he was drunk. Okay, or, I, I, probably <laughs> sure, sure. So, well, and I've no, also heard right, he's smiling at, at the there. time. It was the it was the most inexpensive video ever made for MTV, and I think the story was they made a really expensive video for Pretty Woman, and it didn't do that well, and it kind of oh, set them banned. back. Oh, it got banned. There yeah. you go. So that was a waste <laughs> of money. So they're like, you know what? Like, who knows what's going to happen? Let's just let's just let's just have fun, right? Uh, do that so they they rented a sound stage for like i don't know like 50 bucks or something like that brought in a couple lights they didn't even right. do their full rock show or anything uh, to my and, understanding uh, david lee roth i believe directed the jump video probably yeah, yeah. That's, that's just yeah to save money because yeah it was uh but what an incredible what an incredible painting it's amazing like you really oh my gosh you've just got him down there see this is where my um one of my favorite artists, modern artists, it was uh, is uh, Leroy Neiman, mm -hmm. and this is where the Leroy Neiman. I can okay, from. I can see it in the background, obviously yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. he was he. You know, I, I've got a favorite artist for each different thing. My favorite sure. comic book artist, Neil Adams. You know, okay, my favorite uh, contemporary modern artist was uh, Leroy Neiman. You know? Yeah, and um, and you know, it's kind of funny. Because a lot of people, a lot of artists, especially younger artists or, or up and coming artists, try to copy someone's style because they really look up to that artist or they they really like this. Absolutely, they make it. They want to copy it themselves. That was me and Drew Struzan. Right, but and I've tried that with I tried that with with Leroy Neiman. But you know, your style is like your signature you can try to copy someone else's signature but it's not quite the same because it's yeah. still got you in there yeah and it's the same thing with with art you can try to copy someone else's style but through doing that you develop your own style with exactly. this other artist's style as the yeah. influence and even drew struzan he might not say this but you look at his earlier work and he was a total jc Decker clone his work was like uh, he did the cover for welcome to my nightmare alice cooper yeah it's you look at that work and you look at jc Decker, and it's like oh my gosh it's like it's like a dead ringer for and eventually he just kind of he started using different materials that were better suited for creating um movie posters and uh 
most movie posters, a lot of people say when they see that technique, they say you're ripping off Drew. Well, a lot of the, you know, like Richard Amzel and um, uh, Bob Peake and uh, uh, John Alvin, all those cats use the same, you know, the same kind of technique. But when you take the JC Linedecker style and you use those materials, and then obviously, like you said, after a number of years, you can't help but your own style just kind of emerges. Right. There's nothing new under the sun, and you know you're. It's kind of like I can't remember who said it. It was some guitarist. I don't know if it was Eddie or if it was Jimi Hendrix or if it was Eric Clapton. Some guitarist said. Someone said that. Um, no guitarist. Will be will ever be able to play like Jimi Hendrix because they didn't have the same influences. Jimi Hendrix had 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 BB King had this and that all these other influences, but this but anyone else trying to copy Jimi Hendrix has Jimi Hendrix. Hendrix as You're the right. Influence. Jimi and, Hendrix did not have Jimi Hendrix mm -hmm. as the influence. Yeah. So yeah. So it's it's kind of like this that that sort of thing too. You can you can like. Um, um, Drew Struzan didn't have Drew Struzan yeah. as his influence, whereas we do. And yeah. it's kind of funny that you mentioned the um, the the Alice Cooper album cover. It's kind of funny because that looks totally different. It than doesn't the look stuff like his he, stuff. Yeah, right? it doesn't look like his stuff at all. Yeah, <laughs> but his earlier work is it's uh it's it's total JC Linedecker, and it just over time it evolved. Uh, there and it's neat when you look at the paintings between that stuff and then like the the drew that we all know mm -hmm. there is a period where it's kind of in neither place it's a little bit jc linebacker and it's kind of what he does now right and uh, and eventually it just kind of moved away from the uh from the jc linebacker which is wild um so real quick uh earlier in the week uh i unveiled an unboxing video of the official collector's edition for Aladdin 3477. Check out the video on YouTube. I think I also unleashed the video on Facebook. And I'm going to have another full video where I go through the whole thing and show you uh, page by page. I cannot wait. Uh, swag boxes are coming out soon. I'm going to talk about that uh, coming up uh, in a hot second. But uh, the book looks amazing. I am so thrilled with it. Sometimes with printing, you never know what can go wrong. And when you've got a book that's got over a hundred pages, that's over a hundred times that something might not line up or this here, or the colors look bad here. And I would say 99.99999%. I am absolutely thrilled with how this came out. And the, oh, yeah, oh yeah, go ahead. Sure. I just want to say to, cause I, I, I can't read the names there, but I'm assuming some of the people on my friends list are watching. Oh yeah. If you haven't, yet go to youtube and look up and do a search for aladdin 3477 the trailer of this movie that he's talking about he made it matt made the whole thing I, you know he well he's the main guy responsible he's the guy <laughs> look up that trailer watch it i showed it to my brother for the first time today okay and he's like looking and i and i was telling him about it i'm like i'm like look this is this is a this is a, a, a low budget science fiction movie made by Matt Bush right here in Michigan. And this and that, blah, blah, blah. Not made by some big studio. Yeah. So just watch this trailer. Check it out. What do you think? And he's watching it. He's looking at it. He's like, this guy put some money into this movie. And yeah. I said, yeah, he's been working on it for 13 years. Yeah, yeah. It's 13 years of his life. And yeah, he, he, was, he was impressed by it, by awesome. just the trailer. Awesome. And uh, yeah. Check it out. Thank after, you. After, yeah. after you're done watching us here. <laughs> yeah, check it out on yeah, after the show for sure. Check out Aladdin 3477. The enforcer Dave Todd says, Oh yeah. Good evening, all. What up, Dave? Thank you for joining us. If you're watching, uh, don't be afraid to say hello. Uh, say hello so we know you're there and uh and we can say what up. All right, so I want to go back to some of your uh, speed painting now. So this is great, uh, obviously, uh, Sloth from Goonies. But one of the big things that is a big staple, so there's a lot of Hollywood work, obviously, that uh, that you do uh, for fun. But music is a really big category that I thought was your own thing that I wanted to talk about. So this is an example here where, like, this Jimi Hendrix piece, I feel like some of the spatters and stuff, I feel like that's literally notes just like, 
flinging off the guitar strings as he plays, you know? <laughs> I don't know if you were thinking that, but like, I, I don't just see it. I feel it, right? you know, that's, which is that's, great. That's, that's a big part of what art is. You feel it, mm -hmm. you know. So cool. And then obviously uh, uh, John Lennon, Imagine, super cool. I see this. So this is an example where like, obviously it looks like uh, like Elton John, but to me, this isn't just Elton John. Oh, it looks like he was singing live. I see this and I can hear Saturday, yeah. Saturday, Saturday. Is that what song you were playing while you um, did this? Uh, more than likely. Okay. Uh, I, I no, you know what it was? It wasn't that. It, it was two songs. One that one was one of them, mm -hmm. and the other one was um, it was after this era of, of it, the early eighties. It was. Oh yeah, uh, I'm still standing. I'm still standing. Yep. That's right. There you go. I was going to say, not circle of life. That would be hard to go for a <laughs> candle in the wind after, woohoo, Saturday, Saturday. Chris Cornell, RIP. Very good. It's so, it's very introspective looking. Absolutely love it. Of course, Eddie again. Uh, so real quick, uh, because everyone always wants to know, I see him as two completely different things, but uh, Sammy or Dave? I like them both. Yeah. I, I like them both. The only one I didn't care for was uh, Gary Sharon. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, you know, which the, is great because I actually love the band Extreme, and yeah, he's an amazing singer. But for there was something about that album, and I don't think it was Gary. I think it was just Eddie's writing, whatever he was going through at that period. Yeah, I, it, I it's know. good music, but it's just not Van Halen. It's such a, it's so far removed from. I I agree. You know, it's it's like you know. When they were with Dave, they had a certain style. Mm -hmm. Then when they were with Sammy, they had a, a style that was different than the Dave era. Mm -hmm. Now you're going, you're trying to, you know, you're trying to catch lightning a third time. Mm -hmm. And they, they they did it with Gary Sharon. Gary Sharon is a great singer. Van Halen is a great band. I like Extreme, the band, you know, Gary Sharon's band Extreme. But Gary Sharon just isn't a Van Halen singer. Mm -hmm. But you know, whatever it happened, it happened twenty five years ago. It's one album. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, yeah, there is a couple yeah, songs that on one. that album that I actually yeah. do like. No, sure. Yeah, I, I like the I like the one. Um, I can't even. I don't even know. Oh, the name. Uh, there was uh, without you. Is without that what you. Called? Yeah, yeah. The, I like that one. And, and to be honest, I I probably almost like all of them, but it's just not. If I'm gonna put on a Van Halen record. It's usually, I mean, it's almost always not the one I would put on because if I'm in a Van Halen mood, it's just so far removed from yeah, what I haven't heard that album in about probably 20 years. Yeah. You know, the full album. All right. So this already might be, don't look back in the comments, but this is such a cool piece that you did. And so this is as obviously this is Freddie Freddie Mercury and almost like an alter ego. And I'm curious, y'all in the comments. Because sometimes it's hard to tell who someone is upside down, although there's a, a couple things here that would be a giveaway, even if you can't tell the likeness up upside down. Who do you think it is? And the only hint I'll give you is it's not Brian May. Who is the alter ego in <laughs> this image? Give us some comments. What do you think? I got a good story behind this painting, too. Uh, I can't who tell. Is it? Who is it? Who is it? I know... Uh, I know Sandra knows, <laughs> but who uh, who do you think this is? No one's no one's uh, coming up. With I bet you people are cheating and turning their phones upside down. Oh, that! Oh, you can. Well, they have to do it. They have to hold it flat and do it yeah, so it doesn't. Yeah, so it doesn't, it doesn't correct itself. Well. All right, I'm going to spoil it, and I'm going to show you right side up. Did you know that it was David Bowie? What a fantastic piece. What a cool idea. Um, the story. There's a story behind what, it. What is the story? Okay, what happened was, okay, Prince died. Oh. And I did the painting of Prince. Mm -hmm. David Bowie already died a few couple months earlier, right? Yeah. But I did this painting of Prince, and I did it. I posted the video on facebook and i did it, it like 
two or three days after he died. I don't know. It was the following Monday. And I posted on Facebook. And then all of a sudden that 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 video just went crazy. It went nuts. It got up to about 600,000 views. Wow. Which you know, it's not viral, but it was no. Like, that's pretty amazing, though. That's awesome, right? And I was, I was like, wow, I can't believe that happened. So you know what? I'm like, you know, I, why didn't I do one of David Bowie yet? I should do one of David Bowie. Maybe I'll get another one that's got, like, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll get like a hundred thousand views or something. You know, that would be kind of cool. So I decided, I was started designing this 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 speed painting of David Bowie, and. Then I started thinking of a conversation that I had with a friend of mine years earlier when I first started developing this whole speed painting, putting this whole speed painting thing stick together. Uh, we were talking about doing a painting, me doing a painting where of we're speaking specifically of Harrison Ford, where when you look at it one way, it's it's Han Solo, but then when you flip it right the other way around, okay. it's Indiana Jones. Yeah. So then I thought of that and I'm like, you know what, because I was thinking of what music to use. And I'm like, I really like that song Under Pressure, but that's sung with Queen. Uh, so then I did it. I originally designed it with both faces right side up. And and then I, I was thinking of that conversation with the Indiana Jones and the Han Solo. Yeah. And I'm like, I took the one design and I just kind because of, they're both on two separate pieces of paper. Yeah. And I just kind of like spun it around like that. And I went like that like, yeah. right together and I'm like, no, that's the painting right there. Yeah. So then um, I had my mom record me, you know, film me. Yeah. So, so I, I, I grabbed my mom and I'm like, mom, I got this great idea. Come on, it's going to be real quick. Can you, can you just hold this camera for me? And she, she went out there and she did. She's got that steady hand, man. And, and I started playing under pressure. It was a bit of an extended version. I think it's like six minutes long. Something I found on YouTube. And I started whipping the paint on there, putting it together. And then I finished one end and I flipped it right side up and it's David Bowie, but oh, I'm not done yet. So I kept going at it. I flipped it again and it's Freddie Mercury, David Bowie. I posted yeah. that video on YouTube or yeah. Facebook. Yeah. And I posted it um, uh, and, and, I, and I put the painting up for auction. Uh, and the and the and with with fifty percent of the proceeds going to a charity. I can't remember. I think it was the American Kidney Fund because mm. that's what my dad had. He had kidney uh -huh. issues. Um. So and, and I can't remember what it auctioned off for. Maybe it was a couple thousand. I don't. I don't remember. But after the auction ended, that video went viral six times over. Oh. <laughs> It's got over 40 million views. Oh my what? gosh. <laughs> they say that for, for a video to go viral, it has to have 6 million views within a week. Okay. It's got 40 million. It went viral six times, over six times, almost wow. seven times over. I don't know where it's at now. You know, what the. That boot. is wild. Yeah. And, and, and it went, it, it happened at different times. Like, I can always tell when when the video was going viral again because my phone was going nuts because yeah. at the time facebook al gave you alerts about everything you know yeah. and, and my phone was going nuts comment comment, comment. And like i had to turn my phone off at night oh my god just so i could sleep that is because amazing I was hitting the alerts on you yeah know. <laughs> just wow phone going off you were cracking out like it's the painting oh my gosh <laughs> that is so cool amazing real since, quick oh, oh sorry ahead. no go ahead oh i was just gonna say since then people have you know ripped the video from from my youtube or my facebook channel and yeah. posted it to their pages okay so there's multiple yeah copies of that same video on on facebook and youtube some of them are me some of them are not but That's yeah awesome uh, real quick, I wanted to chat about where the Aladdin 3477 Kickstarter is. As you guys know, the swag boxes, backer kit. So everyone's or most everyone's got their um, their survey in. So these swag boxes are swag boxes are going to come together soon. I am still waiting uh, on the enamel pins. Those were promised to me that they'd be here last week, 
And then on the day that they were supposed to be here, I'm like, uh, hey, do you have a tracking number? And they're like, oh, we, we're testing we're uh, testing the quality. Um, they're going to be ready by this weekend. We'll send you a tracking number. It's been the weekend. They have not sent me a tracking number. But they should come in this week. Also, the shirts, the shirts are getting printed. Um, the Fiji one looked good. They sent me a proof, like a test print of, of Fiji. But uh, and in fact, I can show you here. This is oh, it didn't uh, rotate right. Um, this is uh, Princess Kamala, which looks fantastic. The Fiji one was a little bright, and you couldn't see some of the details. So I'm having them redo Fiji. Still, I should have all of them this week. I hope I can start putting uh, swag boxes together this weekend. Uh, I'm just waiting for these items to come in, I and see then that pin. Uh, touch those textures. I know, and then. Uh, uh, but they are going to be here Ooh, soon. All right. So uh, another thing I wanted to chat about. So you've got obviously the speed painting that everyone knows you for. But another thing that you have been dabbling in is more of a uh, a digital, not just a painterly digital, but more of like a pop art mm -hmm. uh, kind of style. And I absolutely love this uh, technique. This is a really cool pinup. This almost reminds me of like a modern day kind of Nagel. Uh, kind of That's uh, kind style of like what here. I was going for, yeah. Okay, and I love that you did an Aladdin thirty four seventy seven piece with this style. It's yeah. kind of like a Roy Lichtenstein pop art kind of thing, and um, a lot of people have commented on this. This piece is actually in the official collector's edition. Oh, nice. um, uh, that uh, that you guys are gonna uh, that you guys are all gonna get soon. Um, but what's really cool is you've kind of gone a step further and you have started creating some comic book covers. Mm -hmm. uh, so I love this one. This is based on Superman, the movie. I love the DS, the Dave Santia instead of the, uh, the DC. And you've done a number of Chuck covers. And you were telling me earlier that the actor, who's the actor that plays uh, uh, Zachary Chuck? Levi. Okay. And he is, but he shares all of these on social yeah, media. When and I stuff? tag him, you know. Okay. Uh, did you notice the Superman reference that I put in there? Yes. Yeah. Are, are the are the, the Superman reference? Yeah. Read it. I don't, I don't have my glasses on. It says so uh, Chuck is saying, "Don't worry, Morgan. I've got you." And then Morgan is saying, "You've got me." Well, who's got you? Gotcha. Okay. Well, isn't this Spider Man? <laughs> yeah. Okay. You said Superman. Right. Right. The 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 the, the, the text. The, oh. The speaking oh. Is a Superman oh reference, gotcha. Oh, that's, that's right. That's right. Is a spoof. Oh, okay. Of yeah. Yeah. Amazing. From fantasy. 15, I think it is. Yeah, that's awesome. And then this really cool. Um, so this, I know I've seen this before, but it wasn't until recently you shared kind of a another oh, yeah. image of this where it kind of had cutouts of everyone. Right. And then all the people in the audience are, so like I see Dolly Parton, I see Wesley Snipes. You've got right. all these people from Stallone's background and like all, like it is so crazy the thought process and the planning you've put into this that that was a pain in the butt yeah all of the audience met well this is a spoof i'm sure as you know this it's a spoof of the um neil adams uh comic book cover of superman versus muhammad ali okay and yep. the audience members on that cover are all celebrities from the 70s there's uh i don't know there's whatever they're you know, it's all celebrities from the 70s. It was, I think the comic was done in 79 or maybe 80. I don't know. This, I, you know, it's a spoof of that comic cover. They're in the same poses, the, 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 the two main characters. So, but the, but the audience members, instead of celebrities, local, you know, current celebrities, I decided to put actors or characters actually from various Stallone movies. None of the characters in the audience are from rocky the rocky movies though right There's no rocky characters okay there. i got wesley snipes as um as um yeah from uh demolition Man. yeah yeah uh, even um what's her name sandra bullock is is in there too is uh, from demolition and i even got the two kids from spy kids three. Oh my um, gosh <laughs> the one that confuses everyone is kevin james from zookeeper well, yeah know, yeah everyone's like why is you know, Stallone wasn't in that. I'm like, actually, he was the voice of the lion. He's the oh lion. My gosh. <laughs> but you, he had the perfect diction. I said, so are all those other movies where I can't understand them, is that just a thing? <laughs> oh, this is the first fake comic cover I did. Love it. I need to have this comic book. Wait, what did you 
<laughs> the first electrifying issue of Van Halen. And I love also in this issue, The Adventures of Diamond Dave. That is so great. Uh, how awesome would that be to, and is this the one that's on your shirt? It is the one that's okay. on your shirt. That's yep. awesome. Um, uh, so cool. Classic Van Halen. Do you have a favorite Van Halen? Oh, this would be tough. Favorite Van Halen album. If you could only pick one. <laughs> that's that's a tough call. I, I, you know what? If I could only pick one, I would have to go with, 1984 same because i mean that's the album that got me into van halen yeah uh, my favorite van halen song is panama it's on that album uh, yeah right now is a good song too i like that song too but you know I, I that's the one that got me that's the one that introduced me to van halen every single song on that right on that album is is just yeah. amazing I, I i was i think i was nine years old in 1984 yeah i was nine years old i didn't turn 10 until later that year. But yeah, I was nine years old when that album came out. And, I, I, and I'm sure that I've heard Van Halen before that, but mm -hmm. I just didn't know the names of bands back then. Yeah, yeah. Know? Then Michael Jackson came around, and I knew, back, okay, that's Michael Jackson. And then this person, Tina Turner, and, yeah, and, yeah. I, you know, and Van Halen. It was MTV is what really got me into knowing sure. the names of bands. Sure. And and I saw the video for, for Jump. I, you know, the funny thing is that when I was a kid, I never understood why anyone would want to be anything other than the lead singer of the band. Yeah. Because that, that the lead singer gets the attention, the lead yeah. singer gets all the, the, the chicks and this and that, blah, blah, blah. Then I saw the video for Panama. Yeah. And I said to my, my mom, I remember I saying to her, I'm like, Mom, I want to learn to do what that guy is doing. Yeah. So I'm pointing straight to Eddie Van Halen. Yeah, yeah. My brother was taking my older brother was taking art lessons at the time. Um, and as she drove, she was driving him, she dropped him off to this school where he was taking taking art lessons. I think he was he was might have been 11 years old at the time. And I and I saw a guy and I just I associated the building that my brother was taking lessons at. I associated it as a place it wasn't like not a, really really a school but a place where people went to get lessons for stuff and i remember i saw a guy walking a kid walking in with a guitar and i said mom he's taking that kid's taking guitar lessons can i take guitar lessons i wanted to take guitar lessons so bad yeah my mom said no i just kind of like dismissed it i you know figured that um you know, she, you know, she's busy raising four kids. My dad was working and this and that. And so I never really bothered with, you know, pushed, pressured, pressured for it. I just said to myself, when I get older, I'm going to buy myself a guitar and teach myself how to play. Mm -hmm. And that's what I eventually yeah. did. And, and how I got the money for my first guitar. I made this Chewbacca costume back in the nineties before the internet was all over the place and before yeah. everyone had all these, you know, we're making these really, really elaborate screen accurate costumes. And the, my Chewbacca costume was at the time it was, you know, it was fairly accurate. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, now people have made so many, so much many better Chewbacca costumes. Now sure. back then I was like the only one in Michigan. That yeah. Had, and plus I didn't need stilts. Yeah. yeah. So and I and I would wear this costume uh, on Halloween, uh, the Halloween season, and I would go around to all these bars that had the, the they have the, the cash prizes, you know, the oh, contests. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I won, you know, I was winning money and with this Chewbacca costume. I took that <laughs> money, bought my first guitar, bought an amp. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, that, that was uh, yeah. That I think that was about twenty five years ago, something like that. Wow. So cool. So this, and I didn't even, honestly, I didn't even think that, uh, that I was wearing my purple rain shirt. So this is such an awesome mashup. This is obviously return of the Jedi. It's Luke on a speeder bike and you can see Leia in the background and it's even an Ewok hut. And it's just so unmistakable that this is the purple rain image. Love it. Yeah. So cool. I, you know, I, I, I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. I I just never got around to it. And um I was in Bermuda uh last month and I was um I was uh uh painting at a at a fundraiser out there 
and I was sitting in my hotel room late at night. You know, I was getting things ready for the for the event, and it, it was probably about ten, maybe eleven o'clock at night. I was a little restless. Had my iPad with me. I said to myself, "You know what? I've always wanted to do this image, this Star Wars image, Purple Rain mashup." Yeah. Just get just got got to it. Just started working at it. <laughs> so cool. I did a mashup of Purple Rain, and I think I called it Purple Pain uh -huh. for Hollywood is Dead. Uh -huh. And uh, and I feel bad now because I zombified uh, Apollonia and Prince. And uh, it was one of my favorite Hollywood is Dead pieces. But then after Prince died, the fact that I have like a zombie Prince, like I kind of feel weird about that now, you know? Like, <laughs> it's, it's, it's too soon. It's too soon I, to bring I, that I, back to... to to, like I always want to share it during Halloween, but for you know, me, I'm such a Prince fan. It's it's way too soon. I get it. And you know what? I can see possibly um, people who don't know your work and see that piece and then maybe getting offended or yeah. getting, you know pissed off. But people that do know your work, they know that you've. We know you've got that that Hollywood is dead series that you've done, and like. Like we get it. No, mm -hmm. I think if people see that, that know that know about that series that you did, that they probably just you know like, oh, okay, it's part of that. Yeah. So a week or two ago, we did an unboxing of this Aladdin thirty four seventy seven pen, and this pen not only has the logo on it, but if you, it oh, actually cool. lights up, and it says. 113477. It's got the gin symbol on there. It was really funny because uh, James and I didn't know. I think James picked up on it before I did. But at first, I would click it like this and the pen would come out, but it didn't light up. And I said, Oh no, this one doesn't work. And James grabbed it and said, Let me try it. So then he turned it on and it was like, How did you wait here? Let me try that again here. And then I'd go, oh. He's like, What did you do? And he'd say, Here, I'll, I'll show you. I just did this. And I'd be like, what? How? Okay, wait, here, let me try. You just snapped it. So like, okay. And I'm like, ah, oh, it didn't work. So this kept going back and forth. <laughs> like and I had a no, Costello routine. Oh my gosh. And I had no, it did, It never occurred to me that, you know, some people maybe don't want the light right, on. And right. so it just goes back and forth, whether it, whether it lights up or not. But uh, anyway. You got to click it twice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you, have, like to, you other... have to turn it on so that it. It doesn't have the light on then you close it see it doesn't have the light you close it and then you turn it on again and now it has the light so maybe uh, you want to write but you don't want to waste the battery or no right. one else is there to see how cool your light is right. so you just <laughs> i don't know so anyway <laughs> like oh no one's gonna check my cool glowy thing i know like i'll save the battery for when someone else is uh Dude, when someone this, else is here i used to have this pen when i was my dad had this pen when i was a kid that told the time at a digital display for the time. Mm, mm -hmm. And I took it to school. I thought I was like the coolest kid because I had a pen that told time. They had a little clock on there and everyone was like, oh, that clock tells time. That's so cool. This like blows that, this blows that away. It's the little things. So funny. <laughs> He's like, oh, this clock tells time. Like what clock doesn't? You know, they have novelty watches now that they have the band, but they don't tell time. They're completely useless watches. There's one where it's just a little, water pool of rubber duckies sitting floating in there it does nothing but it's a watch what it doesn't there tell time no there's no clock on it it's just a little pool with little rubber duckies in it on the watch band like oh let me check my watch and it's nothing does so, it does it like does it like 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 check your heart rate or no it is completely flashlight useless watch that is a new like niche little hobby thing for people to collect Watches that don't tell time. I mean, Watches that do everything but. So why don't they just go in their kid's play pen and, and grab one of those toy watches that don't do anything and just put that on? Because it, it's an art piece, and uh, it, it's like a $300. <laughs> it's the pet <laughs> pen. It's $300? Some of them get real expensive. What? Yeah. It's like the, it's, it's like the pet rock all over again. Crazy. You know, just... Oh, those made a comeback for a hot minute, too. They... <laughs> Went, they were at Walmart, Pet Rock, in a little cardboard, mm -hmm. little Pet Rock house, and they glued on googly eyes, and it was 20 bucks. I'm like, I could have done that for a fraction of the cost out of my back. Mm -hmm. uh, Sandra says, cool pen. You know what, Sandra? I'm glad you think this is a cool pen because we have another unboxing to do tonight. Now, don't be expecting a lot. A big one. In the first swag box, there is, um, you know, there's things like 
There's a t-shirt. There's an enamel pin. There's the official collector's edition, full color, over a hundred page book. Not all. There's Lego minifigs. Not everything can be like, oh my gosh, it's amazing. I can't wait. There are some items that are cool, but like, um, I can't afford to have every item be like this amazing, like, holy cow, it's so cool. So um, what this is here, well, assumedly. Um, my expectations are now officially astronomical. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, because the pen, like a lot of people are like, oh, I was, at first I was like a pen. But then when it lit up, I was like, oh, my gosh. So don't be expecting anything to light up or to tell time. If something just lights up has a, or glows or plugs in and makes a whirring noise, it immediately makes it a million times cooler. Let's see here. Is that okay? How does this? Oh, oh boy! Oh boy! Okay, so let me preface before you get too excited about what this item is. This is one of ten items, by the way. Now, so what this is? Hold on. Okay, this probably. Okay, so before I show you what this is. So I got this, you get this pen, right? And what would you do with, with this pen that lights up? So I actually, for my birthday last year, I had a milestone birthday and I got these really cool notepads made that I can write people notes and I can say, hey, thank you, you're amazing. Oh my gosh, I really appreciate it. Da, da, da. And I can sign it and maybe do a little doodle, a smiley face, woohoo, whatever. Um, and, and it's really cool to do. And then you've got like these pages and it's just personal. Like a lot of people don't do that kind of stuff anymore. So in addition to this really cool light pen, I thought it would be amazing if in the first swag box, if you get something to write with the pen. An Aladdin 3477 notepad. That's oh, cool. by the way, we're doing an unboxing and... The notepad, it's hard, you can't see the bottom because it's surrounded by white, but it's basically a Fiji notepad. And imagine how cool it's going to be when you need to write people a note and you kind of just say it with a little, you could even draw a word balloon and make it like Fiji is sending you this yeah. note. Hey, can you take out the trash later, please? Beep, boop, thank you, right? That's awesome. <laughs> so this is one of 10 items you're getting. Again, this is on the smaller end. Uh, a lot of the other items uh, in the first swag box are going to be uh, super, super cool. So here you have it. Notepad. Show me some love for this uh, for this notepad. Cool pen. Are you guys happy with the notepad or do you guys feel ripped off? Like, pfft, notepad. Thanks. Wow. Thanks. More like <laughs> notepad. No. I mean, <laughs> you got the Aladdin <laughs> pen. You're gonna need something. I know you to, need something to write, to write on. on. You need to. You need to do both. Before so. I realized it was a Fiji one. I, it, honestly, when you pulled it out, like Matt, did you just reorder more of your Matt? This is the Matt Bush pen? ones from my from my. Uh, <laughs> it's very similar. I like the design of it, so I put the you know the the Roy Lichtenstein dots right. Yep. So, uh, so there you have it. Be looking forward to your own Fiji notepad no. coming soon. I, so, I, I know pronounce? a lot of people who are really, really not only into stationery, but just office, like novelty office supplies in general. So when you have the pen, the notepad, and the sticker sheet, that, that's already like a little stationery bundle. I already know people are just losing their nerd minds over that. So. Now, Matt, I, I got to ask you, you pronounce it Lichtenstein. Is it Lichtenstein or Lichtenstein? Oh, or Lichtenstein? I've heard Lichtenstein and Lichtenstein. I have not heard Lichten, but it might be. I guess it's it like, might be Lichten. Yeah, I, I got, I, maybe it's like maybe it's like Caribbean. Is it Caribbean or Caribbean? Yeah. 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 Gosh, imagine if his last name oh, was or the at the second half of it don't go there no I'm i see him shaking I, his head i no, was going to say it, it what if the second me. half of his name is the right place and is it pronounced licked in the right place or licked in the right place is it chevy chase or chevy chase that's like that's like uh my last name They're, the scottish irish side uh always pronounced it polony uh then the czechoslovakian side always pronounced it polony uh, but then everyone else was like, oh, baloney, like, uh, like baloney. And then so my childhood was set in stone. Oh, and boy. I just, I just don't want to read that. 
<laughs> yeah, Bush didn't have uh, great results either. Uh, Matt says, makes sense. Good pairing. I think it is a good pairing. Thank you for uh, for agreeing with that. Are you on? Are you on Instagram Live too? Right no. Now? Uh, you know what? That's one of the next things that I think uh, it's rumored that uh, I, Streamyard is the software that I use. Oh, okay. The rumor is that Instagram Live will be will be the next thing that uh, they'll gotcha. be able to uh, dip into. I actually just checked today. I was curious. I I didn't check in a while to see if there was a new destination that I could get to. I actually, thought... there was a place called. I had never heard of this before. They do a thing called Hopin now. Have you heard of Hopin or no. Hopin? There's a new one called Hopin. There's I Periscope never... too. Periscope. Is Hopin um, anything like Google Hangout? <laughs> I have no idea, but that's one of the places we can bounce our our live stream to. Is Hopin or Hopin? I'm I not sure. Like, oh, I just hopped in. Hop in oh, all right. So I wanted to talk real quick uh, because actually the next piece is your Indiana Jones piece. But I wanted to chat about. There's a new Indiana Jones movie coming out. And um, I'm a real, I'm really into obviously movie posters, and I'm a big fan. Uh, uh, I love getting into the science of movie posters and the design of it and everything. Sure. But I'm a little, I gotta say, I feel a little strange about the most recent Indiana Jones poster. Now, obviously, Drew Struzan has retired, mm -hmm. and so. Um, I do appreciate that they've moved the mantle forward, that it's it's not just a Photoshop uh, uh, composite, that it is, it looks like it's an actual painting. It might be a digital painting, but I've got no problem with that. And I actually have no problem with the art, but a lot of times it's not the artist that gets to design. A lot of times it's art directed and there's already a number of artists that have made the composition or even if it's the same artist, they have to go through so many people. There's, it's too many cooks in the kitchen. But I have to say this design, I'm pretty underwhelmed with myself. I don't know what you think of this. And I'll tell you why my thoughts are the way they are. What, what do you think of this? Have I, you had a chance to look at it yet? I, I mean, no, I haven't really seen this one. I've seen the other one. And I like the other one a lot. Mm -hmm. The the Because the other one looks more of like, looks more like a 1970s movie poster kind of. Like yeah, it's yeah. Kind of like a retro look to, mm -hmm. to it. This one, I haven't really, let me take a look at this. Is it, is it? Is it's it? Antonio Banderas right there in the middle. Yeah, I what? see that. Yeah, he's in the movie. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Wait, I, is that Mads Milkinson? Yes. Yeah, I, 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 I really... Yeah, I really don't have much of an opinion. On it. So it's, here's 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 my beef with it. Doesn't have the now same everyone feel. everyone obviously knows Indiana Jones, but if you didn't, right? And it's been a lot. It's been over 15 years since the last Indiana Jones movie. But if I didn't know anything about Indiana Jones, first of all, in looking at this, I'd say, oh, so Antonio Banderas plays this person named Indiana Jones, huh? Okay. Uh, wow. You know, I, All right. I see it. I see what you're talking then about. Then I would okay. say, so the villain in this is this shadowy figure with a fedora oh, and he whips see, people. He that like, story? he whips the crap out of you while his shadow. eyes are in shadow. So he's, he's, he's kind of in shadow and man, look out for the guy with a whip. That's the, that's the villain in this clearly. It does look like the villain. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know what? I mean, the return of the Jedi poster was that way. And Darth Vader it was in the Indiana Jones spot. Plot twist. He's the bad guy. He's, I, he's been the bad guy. I, maybe, long. maybe. I don't know. So um, then, and the other crazy thing, I know a lot, I know, and a lot of it's just internet rumor, but pretty sure that Antonio Banderas has a scene or two. It's basically a cameo. Also, uh, this character here, I forget his name, but he was in that Sandman series. He's been in other stuff, but other stuff that I haven't seen. He was in the Sandman series uh, that was on Netflix, and then this this little uh, this little uh, I don't know if it's a Spanish youngster. Also, I think just has a scene that it's just it's essentially just a quick hand. It's not like short round. It's just a quick a quick ditty, from what I understand. And maybe I'm wrong about these, but it's so weird because they really seem like they are main characters. And then Indiana Jones is this villain looming, looming in the distance, which yeah. is just, just awkward. And why would they, why would they do it this way? But uh, apparently reasons, you know, I mean, you know, who knows? It could be, it could be uh, contractual oblig obligations, you know, they like uh, uh, they have to be on the poster because it's in the contract. 
you know, um, from, you know. A, from an artistic perspective, for me, that just creates intrigue and it makes me want to see it more. Oh, really? Right. Okay. Then, hey, well, I, then I, there you go. And maybe more Antonio Banderas is a good thing. Maybe they could only afford him for a scene or two, and maybe, right. uh, I don't know. We're still not seeing the Mason X Bumblebee commercial, so I mean... <laughs> well, I mean, getting back to, to, to the Return of the Jedi movie poster, I remember hearing that um, um, after Empire Strikes Back, even though Mark Hamill played the main character, um, after Empire, after Return, when Return of the Jedi came out at the time, um, Indiana Jones had come out and Harrison Ford had become a bigger star. Mm. So they had to place him, um, give him equal uh, 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 coverage on the movie poster mm -hmm. as they did with with Mark Hamill. Yeah. So and it was part of the contract. So I'm thinking maybe it's the same thing with. Um, with these maybe you know, with yeah these actors. it's it's certain it's certainly possible and uh yeah who knows um we've got some uh some comments here um sandra says cool notepad i love my pens and notepads really awesome i i do too i use them all the time uh amber says oh i love the notepad am i the only one that can never write on awesome notepads because i just don't want to use them up lol that's Amber we were hanging out with. Yes, absolutely. And uh, Matt says, Amber, you're not the only one. I have a hard time using the sticker sheet because I don't want to commit to something single use. By the way, there is a sticker sheet that you are going to get in the first 113477 uh, swag box. And Matt, for that reason, I am going to give everyone not one sticker sheet, but two. That way you can keep one pristine and not use it if you choose not to use it and then you've got one you can totally waste or if you've got two kids that aren't good at sharing and it's easier just to give every kid the same thing or whatever <laughs> you're gonna get you're gonna uh, ask you for that like you're gonna we're boxing things up yeah yeah you're gonna uh so for sure uh you're gonna get more than uh more than one same uh it, uh you know what if you guys remind me for swag boxes maybe i will send you guys an extra uh notepad that way you have one you can actually use and then one you can keep pristine uh sandra says amber i have several pads unused for that reason really <laughs> i i use mine all that like ones that i have from other people or other i i use notepads all the time i always need scrap sheets to uh write stuff on as a kid my uh, amber says as a kid my sticker book had a bunch of pages of stickers uh in there on their full sheets nice i used to collect stickers when i was a kid yep. as well I so have. yeah i'm glad it's not it's it's not me uh dave todd says paint by intern there you go um so i'm not blaming the artist the artwork is phenomenal but i know there's when it comes to the final design there's usually so many rules like this the rule might be uh harrison ford had to be on top he had to be the very first thing from top to bottom is right. how you read things. There. Maybe that was the only rule. He had to be the one on top. And so all the designs that, you know, that were submitted, he's out. There he is always I mean, the, on top. The pose is similar to Raiders of the Lost Ark. That's true. And there's, I can see like that, like that's a cool thing. And maybe that's where they were going. Like it's a familiar, um, uh, the way he's got the whip and everything. Um, so it is what it is, but uh, I wanted to segue, obviously, into Indiana Jones, and I wanted to talk a little bit. You've got some images here, like this is Cindy Crawford, and look, and oh my gosh, one of my childhood crushes, and look at you hanging out with my girl, Cindy Crawford. So yeah. tell me about this. Uh, that was for um, uh, it was for an event at, at Art Van Furniture. Mm -hmm. She's got her furniture line. Mm -hmm. and i've done i've done three or four events with with her uh and they were all with with art van and okay. um i we did the paintings i did three paintings at each event and we the, the money went to, you know we we uh the money went for um the children's leukemia foundation of michigan okay apparently she had a brother that died of, of leukemia oh my gosh um, yeah, when she was like like ten years old or something like that. Wow. Um, she so, looks great. Oh yeah. Th well, this is this is old. This is about 
No, I remember when she was because I remember going into Art Van and seeing mm -hmm. she uh, that she had her own line or whatever. Yeah, this this was about ten years ago. Okay, uh, because I asked her to my uh, uh, twenty year high school reunion to be my date. Yeah, she turned me down. Uh, uh, something about being married with kids or something. Uh, yeah. Details. <laughs> Details. <laughs> Actually, I, I you know I kind of like when I asked her, I was kind of like half joking because sure, I sure. knew she would say no. Yeah, As but what if she would have said yes? That would have been amazing. I would have had no clue what to do if she said yes. Oh I would have been. Gosh. <laughs> I, I <would've laughs> playing with Dave's Ridley. So. <laughs> but, but yeah, the, um, yeah, that was it. This one was at Art Van in Novi. Um, now they're all Gardner White. Um, actually, I was just at Gardner White yesterday buying some 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 furniture, and uh, they they now they hold her furniture line. Um, but uh, yeah, and I did another event with her in Cleveland. I think about three years, right before the pandemic. Yeah, she still you know, mm -hmm. remembered who I was. You know, awesome. She came up to me said hello. Um, so cool. Yeah, that's wild. You know, and, and it's kind of funny. Because people post pictures of these of these celebrities from the eighties and nineties, and they post them on Instagram and the Instagram groups, and um, and they say stuff like, "Oh, that picture is highly photoshopped." Yeah, and and they did it. Someone did it to Cindy Crawford one time, and I'm like, "Look, man, I've seen her in person. That picture is not photoshopped. She looks that good mm -hmm. still." That's tough. so. This is yeah. So this is. Uh, Tommy Chong signing your painting, and here oh, you are hey. <laughs> with the man himself. That's amazing. Yep, yep. Uh, a couple buddies of mine there, my, my buddy uh, Mike and and Aaron. Um, it's funny when I when I when I first met him, he recognized me from somewhere. I've seen you before. He goes, uh huh. Like, uh, I don't know, maybe. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of weird when that happens. That's happened a few times. Sure. Uh, it happened mo uh, even right before this with um, with uh, Bo Jackson. Okay. In in Bermuda, when I painted I did the event that I did in Bermuda that I was talking about earlier. And is it, that is that this? Oh no, that's that is uh, that's, that's, Bo, that's okay. Bo Jackson. Yeah, yeah. He looked at me and he says, "I've seen you before. I've seen you on TV." Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's possible. I know he lives in Chicago. And I said to him, you know, I've been on WGN. I've there. I've seen you on TV. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. and there was, you know, the hardcore pawn, you know, it was episode that I did 10 years ago. That I haven't seen. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I was on, I was on there. Actually, actually, I met Les at the Les Gold from Hardcore Pawn. I met okay. him oh. at the yeah, at, at the Cindy Crawford event. Oh, wow. And it was when I painted that painting, it was when he asked me to come on his show. And um and uh and I did the painting of of Les and uh and uh, you know we did the and I didn't want to go on the show. I didn't want to go on it. I said to him I said to him, I've seen your show. I don't want to go on it because I don't want to be one of those guys that you yell at and throw out of the store. He goes, no, you're going to be the fresh episode. I'm just giving away all the secrets now. <laughs> you're going to be the fresh air of the episode. Yeah, just yeah. Come in there. We'll make a deal, and you do the painting and 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 this and that. And I said, okay, you know. And I thought about arguing with him on the on the show. Yeah. You know, and, and being thrown out because that would be kind of an honor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I decided not to. I was a little timid when I when I went on there. I was a little little. A little bit on the shy side yeah but that next picture that is spud webb um you know i'm six foot nine yeah and i i, I i've always said that if i ever met spud webb i was going to take a picture with him and create that caption yeah and he was in bermuda and wow got, and, and we took the picture he's a real cool good, cool dude you know and because people always ask me or they always throw at me you know because of how tall i am do you play basketball i didn't play basketball i never did just not into sports yeah yeah and they would say um they would say oh such wasted talent and i'm like no there is no talent <laughs> yeah that's I, not, no yeah. basketball talent here yeah, yeah. i have no no coordination it's just oh such wasted height or you know that sort of thing <laughs> and then i would say to them well, Spud Webb is only five foot six. What's your excuse? You know, yeah, how come yeah. you don't play basketball? Why yeah, you must suck at it. 
Yeah, <laughs> well, that, really do. <laughs> well, that's what I would say. So then I created that. That I took that picture and I created the caption. Don't believe in stereotypes. Only one of these two men played basket, played professional basketball. So cool. So what my so here's something that I've always wanted to chat with you about. Something that I've always thought would be um, super cool. And right now I'm kind of wrapped up in a lead and stuff like that. But one day what I would love to do, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. I've always wanted to, to chat with you about this. Okay. One day I would love to go on tour, have a co-headlining show, Dave Santia and Matt Bush, or Matt Bush and Dave Santia, or we could just call it Matt Santia and Dave Bush, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. This is me spitballing. Okay. I would love to go on tour and go to like theaters, you know, like uh, Fillmore type, you know, uh, things or whatever and have a thing on stage and kind of do. Did you ever go to one of my Fantastic Vision shows back in the day that were at the Emerald Theater? Yes. So something like that where maybe maybe there's a gallery that people can go through of our artwork. We've got merch booths where people can buy our prints, our books, you know, whatever, DVDs, whatever we've got, but then have a stage show set to music. You do kind of a little bit of what I do. I do a little bit of what you do. And maybe at the end, there's a grand finale where we come out and together make this masterpiece. Maybe we get charities involved, whatever. I don't know. But dude, I would love to spend a summer yeah. going on tour with you we get radio involved and we do this thing like that's never been done before and like we blow the roof off and do this crazy amazing thing i i'm, I'm down with it let me tell you man i've i've been wanting to do something like that and put it on like like some sort of some sort of tour mm -hmm. i have no idea what steps to do to get it out there that sort of thing. We need, we definitely need someone that like, you know, I was really amazed and I was thinking about maybe doing something like this with Aladdin. Of course, this will depend on who the distributor is and everything. But I went uh, last October, I went uh, to the Fillmore to see Kevin Smith and he brought Clerks 3 there. Mm -hmm. But it was amazing to me where he, it was almost like a rock show where obviously there's a crowd of people, everyone's there. He had a merch table for all things Clerks and Kevin Smith and Viewist Universe and all that. Um, he came out, he introduced the film. Mm -hmm. Everyone watched the film. The crazy thing was the film was already out in theaters and the film was already on demand. So you could already see the movie, yet it was still sold out at the Fillmore. Tickets were, I, I got nosebleed seats or seats. Yeah. And uh, like they were already, I want to say they're about 80 bucks. And I, I brought two friends. So I spent uh, over 200 bucks just to go with two buddies. Uh, but I was super entertained. It was great. Watched the film. The film was great. I, Kevin Smith's movies are hit and miss with me. This one was definitely hit. Yeah. Um, then he came out after he had a, a Q and a and kind of a, and he's, that's my favorite thing with Kevin Smith is his, with him talking with audiences right. are always gold. That was amazing for two hours. And then he had this really cool thing for, um, there were VIP things. And this is something we would have to think about for that as well. But it was amazing how there were easily, I don't know how many, there might've been 100, 200 people that spent even more, like over $1,000 where you get three things. You get to meet Kevin Smith. You get to have a photo with Kevin Smith and you get one item signed. How much was this? It's over $1,000. Jeez. And it, there was like, there was like, oh, there, there was, I, I didn't count, but there had to easily be 100, 200 people that went the extra mile for that. So what they did is we stuck around to watch how this worked out. And it was crazy because they had, they had everyone stand single file kind of around the front side downstairs and then lining up around the stage and around this side here. So everyone single file. And then what he did, instead of doing each one of these things with one person and kind of going one at a time, he first came out and they said, stay in your single file. So he came out and he said, hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, I like your shirt. Hey, how you doing? And he just went around. And met, so now everyone's met Kevin Smith. All right. Then for selfies, they had, hey, you got to have your phone ready. So he had a couple helpers 
that were like leapfrog where they would take people's phones. He would go in, Hey, what up? They would take a photo and then they go to the next person who already has their phone. Then this person leapfrog goes three people ahead to grab their phone, literally goes around the audience quickly taking selfies. No one's fumbling with phones because the helpers are on it. They've got people's phones. They know what to do. Da, da, da. Then he goes, everyone's got to have every item signed. So they've got their items. And he just basically walks with a Sharpie and walks around and he's a little bit more talking to people and being right. funny and what it's not, you know, that clinical, but to get through it, I mean, cause otherwise for that many people to do all three things yeah. would take forever, especially if you did all three with one person, then you're waiting for their phone. Oh yeah. Where's my phone? Oh my, Oh, you got my phone. You know, it just, it would, Oh my gosh. Right, right. So it was great. And I started doing the math. So here's the crazy thing. Normally, when a band comes to the Fillmore, you have an entire crew, you've got a guitar tech, you've got a drum tech, you've got people doing lights and everything, you've got a tour bus, you've got a, a big, you know, truck with all the equipment. He even said during this thing that he, basically, they're in a minivan, they're in like a soccer mom minivan going from town to town, they've got a couple boxes of merch in the back, and when the merch runs low they just have stuff fedexed from the warehouse to to replenish that and they it's it's the quickest easiest thing i started doing some of the math in my head what he's making at these shows from tickets from merch from the vip things mm -hmm. and then but it's all like fun and then he gets to tell fun stories right. like it's amazing right yeah, i mean i'm sure there's a lot of overhead involved i mean he just has to pay for the film more Yes, but not what a band would play. What, what right. A band, like they would have so much more with like drum tech, guitar tech, and 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 then uh, just like, it's it's wild. I wanted to go to that show too. Yeah. Yeah, I, something happened. Something came up where I couldn't make it or couldn't go or something like that. But yeah, I wanted to go. I wanted to see that. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it didn't. Me and my buddy, my other buddy, Matt, uh, the one that I brought here when we saw the movie. Yeah. Um, we, we, we wanted to go, but something, I maybe I had a, had a back that day or something but yeah i couldn't make it but yeah that's cool though that you're able to get there i can't believe how expensive it was so, <laughs> yeah i, I, it's, I mean uh, i believe it's quick, it but, but people and people well will pay it but of course like you said there is a lot of overhead and to yeah. to rent out um the fillmore where because they you know and the people running the merch there might have been a person on his end overseeing things but it was probably people working at the fillmore mm -hmm. that's like okay how much do these shirts cost okay 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 and then they had people like that's their job is to sell merch and then the money goes you know right to uh right to kevin and company but anyway so this is me i've been thinking this for years and like oh my gosh i would love to do this thing with da with dave santia like we would have to come up with something really entertaining. It would be a show. There would be music. We would have to do it legit. We might have to license some of the music for, you know, public use or whatever, right. if it's something like that. But, man, we could do something really, I'm, I'm really not, cool. Let's, let's talk about I, it. Let's get together. Dude. You know, we can't, we can't do it in front of the camera. So yeah. I'll, I'll let you know all our <laughs> secrets. <laughs> I'm All right, yeah. that. you heard it. You heard it here. You heard it here first. Yeah, it's something that I've been wanting to do for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, since the beginning, since I first started speed painting, actually. Yeah. Uh, I just don't know how to go about doing it. And and sometimes, you know, yeah, you know, going it's it's a matter of going about doing it, figuring out what to do. We would to need do in it. we would need a tour manager, and yep. it could be someone maybe that usually works with bands, but someone that knows. How to contact the venues how to give them whatever the list is there's a name for it and it's the writer maybe for what our oh, needs yeah, are in the space and and everything else Handler. what I we you know we need first. we need m ms with the brown ones picked out in our in our dressing rooms and stuff <laughs> I right a story for that too it was a trip to that too <laughs> i mean i mean you're not we both know that that's a van halen yeah yeah right sure uh for those that are watching that don't know a van halen had it in their rider that they needed a barrel or a bowl of m ms uh in their dressing room a big bowl and then and then in fine print uh, somewhere in the contract it said there is to be no brown m&ms in the backstage area they all had to be picked out yeah, of the so, bowl okay. yeah yeah and i guess according to david lee roth in his book it was in such fine print you had to need them practically needed a micro mag magnifying glass to read it sure so I, I was doing this event 
it was some it was in Royal Oak at the Royal Oak Music Theater, and I can't remember what the event was. It wasn't Bras for a Cause, it was something else. And and the person running the event, she was a Van Halen fan, and so am I. And we were joking about Van Halen and this and that. And she asked me, what do I want in my dressing room backstage? And I said, look, I'm not going to pull a Van Halen stock on you and ask for a, a bowl of brown M&Ms with no, with a, a, a bowl of M&Ms with the brown ones taken out. Yeah. I said, I don't need anything. Bottle of water is fine, that sort of thing, right? So the day of the event comes, I go to my dressing room and there's a bowl of M&Ms with no the brown way. ones. Removed. That's amazing. <laughs> so the start, for those of you that don't know, the, the really cool thing that I didn't know until, I think until reading David Lee Roth's book yeah. uh, as well, I heard that when I was a kid that they had that in there, but I, I never knew the reason why. And the reason why was that was how they knew if they didn't have the bowl of M&Ms, they'd be like, we're out. That's it. Right. Too bad. And the reason why it wasn't that they were being difficult, but they knew if they weren't following that in the contract, what other things were they not following? Were they going to, were the lights going to drop on them on stage? Yeah. Were there, what other th snafus were going to happen right. if they couldn't even follow those directions? Yeah, I Which read is that pretty too. brilliant. That's a really good thing. To, that's your first go to. Did they do the M&M? Oh, cool. They did. Are oh, the brown they, ones they did. gone? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the brown ones gone? That's a, did that's you read a, the story about when he found? There was a brown M&M &M in the backstage area. I think they were in Texas, I believe. There was a David Lee Roth. It was backstage, and there was a brown M&M &M on the floor. And in the book, he says that he went into this whole uh, mock Shakespearean um, routine, what has thou lain before me, that sort of thing. Yeah. And then him and the band and the crew did, like, thousands and thousands of da dollars in damage to the stage. Okay. And because they broke the they broke yeah. the rule, they they uh, you know not supposed to have the the brown M and M's backstage, and they had one. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, crazy. It was a good good read that book. That was very entertaining. So, crazy from the heat. See, yeah, crazy from the heat. Sandra says, "Do it," and she says, first stop, California." Absolutely, we would have to do my old stomping grounds of uh, Los Angeles, Pasadena, and all throughout. That's where she's uh, from. California. Uh, for sure, in Pasadena uh, or Los uh, Angeles. Los Angeles. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, that's right. Right, you're in Los Angeles, right? Uh, Los yeah. Angeles area for sure. Um, yeah, we would have to do, and so we would need a manager that knows the cities, knows the radio stations to call in. There could even be a thing where, like, in order to keep things productive. And um, and sometimes to keep you know cash flow generating, mm -hmm. like during the day, are we doing workshops at colleges that are in that town, and then at night we do our show while we're at the college doing a workshop or a presentation that we're getting paid for. Everyone's setting up our show at the thing, and then we show the show up. You know what I mean? We right. need a manager that's like um, a tour manager that's kind of getting making all the phone calls and getting everything ready so we can just go and do it and maximize because we could go for a three month tour but like if we don't have if we don't have everything set up to where we're constantly doing everything then we're the ones that have to do it and then there might be days we're in oklahoma but then we don't have a show in montana for another three days so do we just drive home but by the time we get home, we'll, we'll, it'll only be a day. We might as well just go to Montana and what hang out for a couple of days. You know what I'm saying? But a tour manager, they would like they would they would set it like glue. They would fill in all the empty spaces. They would. It's what they do for a living, and I feel like they would they, they, they would really they, lock right, it they, in. They they would do it, you know, in a pattern. They wouldn't have us going to to Chicago one day and then Miami and right. then back up to, you know, yeah. to, uh, Springfield, Illinois or something like that. Yeah. It would be Chicago, then Illinois, or then Springfield, then Miami, you know. Sanders says, yes. That's what I thought. Kavina. All right. Yeah. Rock and roll. Absolutely. I, I, for some reason, and I should, I should know that off the top of my head, Cassandra, and we talk all the time. Yeah. Her and I. We're always messaging each other. <laughs> it's awesome. I, I got her into watching the show Chuck, and I got her into oh, watching okay. Lost. Oh, Lost! Oh my gosh, that is—it's probably my favorite show of all time. That it, it is. I, I, you know, it's it's one of them for yeah. me. Yeah, you know, it started uh, after season four. It started to get a little, and then the last season was just—it's not that I hate the ending, 
but I just feel like it was really rushed. But those first four seasons were, yeah, in, for, especially the first two, but the first four seasons, incredible. For me, for me, that the, 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 it, it started, it almost lost me in the third season, but then it, because it, it, they just went on too long. It, the, the first half was just a bit droll to me. Mm-hmm. And then it picked, but it picked up in the second half. Um, but the scene where they almost, where it, they almost killed Sawyer. I remember watching it. I'm like, Sawyer was my favorite. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you better know. He already killed Charlie. He's yeah. already gone. Uh, better not be Sawyer. If Sawyer's gone, I'm gone. Yeah. And- <laughs> Sawyer's gone. We riot. Yeah. So a lot of people uh, might not know this about me, but I have a couple lost related tattoos. So one oh, yeah. of them is this. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Speaking of Charlie, right? <laughs> then a lot of people might not realize. A lot of people think like, dude, how many, like you spend time in prison? Oh, it's the numbers. 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42. It's the lost numbers. Uh, I almost got the Dharma Initiative uh, logo. Just haven't had a chance to get that yet. And then true story, I was this close to getting a tattoo on my hand, but they don't last very long because yeah. they just they just kind of like uh, areas that oh, you use a lot, they wipe away. I, I what was I going to get on my hand? Not Penny's boat. Yes, I was going to get <laughs> not Penny's boat. On my hand, but you gotta be careful with that because there's two different screen used versions of Not Penny's Boat. Because I did a digital uh, painting of Charlie, okay, with his hand pressed up against the, you know, with him dying, yeah, and and, and I noticed I, all the photo references that I found. Yes, well, this one the writing is different than this one. Yeah, and uh, that's yeah. so funny you mentioned that because I've noticed that as well because I was legit gonna get a tattoo. Yeah, and so I was looking for the for <laughs> the, the same the thing. same reference. Yeah, that's so funny. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, Sandra says, and I'm all in for Aladdin now. Woohoo! Awesome, <laughs> awesome. That is so great to hear. Thank you, Dave. Yeah. Spreading the word. Uh, Mike Heston, uh, Jack, you ever think this isn't real? Uh, that's just, uh, so, or, or Jack, oh, I, I, I think I'm supposed to say this. Oh, Jack says, you ever think this isn't real, that this is some experiment uh, to see if you'll push the button? And Desmond says, every, every single, single day, day brother. brother. <laughs> Love it. Every single day. Yeah, that show just, it's so amazing. It's so, it's so, so good. You know, what was interesting is uh, my girlfriend, Casey, she had never seen the show before. And it's, it's probably her favorite as well. Yeah. She had never seen it until we started dating and we started watching it right after COVID started. The crazy thing is, uh, and I've seen from beginning to end, I've probably seen Lost probably four times in total now from beginning Jeez. to end. But the last time that I saw it was with Casey and it was the best time that I saw it. It was cool seeing it with her through her eyes, right. seeing it fresh and everything. Yeah. She lo- absolutely loved it. But what was interesting is seeing it during lockdown because a lot of the elements of that show, I didn't really, it didn't really occur to me watching it the first couple times. But when we were in lockdown and mysterious illness, there's a lot of like the hatch and quarantine and don't open it. And like all the, like it was really wild watching it while we were going through the mysterious because we obviously when COVID was first a thing, you didn't know how serious is this? Are we going to be in lockdown? We, I mean, people this were asking, real, this right? could be five, this could be yeah. five years That's, that before like we rumor. have a, yeah, you didn't know. Yeah. And so it was really interesting. Now they're on a beautiful, you know, island or whatever, right. but still there were so many parallels to what was happening in real life. Um, so it was crazy watching that show at that time. It was I, really, I, really amazing. My, my Sandra over here, who, who keeps popping up here, she watched it during the pandemic also. And I was kind of like watching it along with her. She's in California and I'm here. Mm. But I was, I was, I was already a, a, a few episodes ahead because I was going through another rewatch. And she's kept bugging me about, <laughs> about what's going to happen, what's going to And I would not tell her. Yeah, I know you can't spoil it. You can't. No, you got to. Yeah, some of those episodes too are so monumental, Mm -hmm. and I think I I, once I saw uh, there was a list of the top ten greatest episodes of TV or the most shocking episodes of TV of all time or whatever. Mm -hmm. And number one was the episode from season two of Lost, uh, and the name of the episode is Two for the Road, and that was that was one of the most shocking television things ever 
where uh, it was called Two for the Road because yeah. two main characters died. Who were the... Uh, it was a uh, Anna Lucia oh, and, oh, yeah, uh, Anna and Lucia, uh, the right. girl who was dating. Oh, who started what? dating Hurley. I can't Sorry remember. Sorry for anyone who still has never yeah, watched Yeah, yeah. Series. You guys like, got it. Like you'll forget by the time one, you... Uh, if you have not watched Lost, you clearly don't watch it. The show has been over for almost a decade. Yeah. The statute of limitations on spoilers has yes. long been expired. Yep, yep. Oh, and I made a mistake. I said that Charlie died before they did the... Uh, the before they almost killed Sawyer. Oh, no, he okay. died after. Yeah, yeah. It was the end of season three. I think what it done. might have been, yeah, yeah. What is the statute of limitation on that? Like, on spoilers, uh, it depends on what it is. If it's episodic stuff like TV, yeah, I would say after the show is done. Maybe, yeah, maybe, or after the I, season I, I, is done. If it's a movie, I, I'd say a year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. If it's if it's, I, I I'd say a year. I'd say that's what I'd say. Yeah. But I know if it's been like ten years, dude. You know, you haven't seen it yet. Yeah, hey, I, I, but you clearly did, did not go out of your way to even try to. <laughs> right. <laughs> so Sandra says, uh, "LOL, I bugged him the whole time." <laughs> That's did. great. So I've been having the um, the executive producer screenings. They've been going awesome. I've oh, got yeah. another another one this Friday. It's just been fantastic, and it's also been great for me because I've been getting a little bit of feedback. I've been making a little bit of changes. I think I have sound dialed in now. I think, but I need to watch it another two more times. So this week I'm watching it in the front and this week, or, and then the week after I'm watching it in the back to, to make sure the surround sound. And then I think we are a lock. All right. So here's what's up next week, Sunday, we are going to be back at 9 PM. I'm not sure if we have a special guest yet. I have to check my calendar, uh, but I will be uh, chatting with you guys about that through the rest of the week. Dave, thank you so much oh, for uh, for being on here. That oh, was so much fun chatting oh, about uh, everything. Dude, you have to be on again for sure. I'm we'll have you on yeah. again. So and uh, and then, dude, that tour, the Matt Bush and Dave Santia tour, I would love that. I need to know. I really, I don't want to like step into your like your territory of speed painting, but I feel like if we're going to do this together, I feel like you need to do a little bit of mine and I need to do a little bit of yours. And the grand finale, I don't want to spoil the show, but for sure, the grand finale has to be both of us each night doing something together. Well, yeah, yeah. That's so got, like, gotta... and like a routine where like I'm over here and you're over there, but then maybe we switch and high five with hands of paint that just go <laughs> everywhere. And then we switch sides and then well, we have to make sure we, we this way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and like, uh, it would be, uh, uh, the hard part is, is coming up with the ideas. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm down for sure because it's awesome. something that I've I've been I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Um. And, uh, as a matter of fact, I I kind of like I mentioned something uh, with another speed painter friend of mine uh, not too long ago. How cool would it be if we got together a show where we did multiple? Where it was a stage performance, but there was multiple types of artistic type of acts on the stage not just you know we'll have a speed painter a splash painter someone that does this type of painter that type you know that sort of thing and then also have like a gallery mm -hmm. you know something like that but yeah um, and there could be something interactive there could be all right. kinds of cool things one thing i just thought of off the top of my head there's a particular for screen printing shirts there's a particular like ink that they use mm -hmm. that dries really quick what if there was a thing where people can get shirts uh in shirts of yours shirts of mine that uh, that are kind of maybe based on a speed painting you've done or something like that but what if there's a blank area and at the end of the show people can come up maybe there's a meet and greet or something like that right. what if part of the, sh the the shirt that you buy maybe it's it costs a little bit it's five bucks more you know something it's it, not not too big a deal but oh, what if dollars well, well, there you go. Wait, <laughs> think big like Kevin Smith, yeah, right? Exactly. Well, he's been doing it. He's built an audience, and okay. maybe this is like far ahead. But wouldn't step it be cool? First step, what if there step. was a shirt that has printing on it, like kind of here? But what if there's, I don't know, what if there, even Eddie Van Halen, where he's like kind of rocking out and his guitar is going up like this, but there's like a blank area here, right? What if people buy these shirts, they don't get them yet until we come out and then we're able to grab either a little brush or even our fingers in the screen printing paint. And we can go to each shirt and just go, and then it just oh, has a nice splatter on there. And then we hand them the shirt and yeah. then it dries really quick. And then 
when they wear this shirt, they get to wear, oh my gosh, cool, Dave Santia, Matt Bush. And they can say, dude, they actually did this. Right here. Yeah. Would that be wild? That That'd would be, be cool, cool, right? Yeah. There you go. Well, yeah, for sure, man. For sure. We got to talk about it. heard it here first. Don't tell all your friends yet. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, we need to have a big, uh, a big, a big announcement about it. Uh, Sandra says, fun night. Thanks, guys. Thank you all for watching, even you silent people that I know are watching right now. Um, don't give away all of our ideas. Yeah, we got to, we got to, uh, mum's the word on this for sure. It, this needs to happen. All right, gang. Thank you so, so much for hanging out with us in the lounge. And uh, I will be back next week with James and we will talk at you guys soon. Yeah.